Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. We will begin this council meeting by acknowledging that the County of Prince Edward is on traditional land that has been inhabited by Indigenous peoples from the beginning. We thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. We recognize and, deep and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this land. Today, the County of Prince Edward is still home to many First Nations and Métis people, and we are grateful to have an opportunity to meet here, work, and continue stewardship of this land. Um, by now, we are all aware of the grim discovery of the mass grave of 215 unidentified children at the site of a former residential school in Kamloops, BC. <laughs> I would like to express my sincere condolences and those of members of council, our municipal staff members, and all residents of Prince Edward County to the remaining members of the families of victims who will be affected by this discovery as more details emerge. And to the friends that offered support to them as they endured the unimaginable emotional pain of not knowing what happened to their loved ones. In recognition of the loss of these young and innocent lives, I would like everyone in attendance on Zoom or watching this meeting through YouTube to observe a minute of silence in their honor. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. I will now call the uh, meeting back to order. Uh, tonight, we are meeting electronically on Zoom. This evening, we are resuming the meeting of May 19th after recess was called owing to the lateness of the hour. I would like again to express my apologies to those people who were inconvenienced by the recess at that time. Um, tonight's agenda lists uh, the items um, before committee for consideration, but we're resuming the meeting at item number seven of the agenda. Members of the public who wish to speak at a planning committee meeting must pre-register with the clerk's office in advance. This evening, we have 19 people pre-registered to speak on items in section seven, all of whom are allowed up to five minutes to speak. Under section seven of the agenda, the staff recommendation is typically to approve an application with conditions or to deny a planning application. Council has final say on the applications from the county's perspective. Following council's decision, notice will be circulated in accordance with the Planning Act. If a person or public body would otherwise have an ability to appeal the decision of council to the local planning appeal tribunal or, or LPAT, uh, but the person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the municipal clerk before the bylaw is passed. The person or pub public body is not entitled to appeal the decision. Bylaws listed on this agenda provide the force of law to previous decisions of council. So with that, we will move to um, item number, excuse me while I flip screens here. Item 7.1 on the uh, on the agenda and I will ask for a mover and a seconder to put this onto the floor please. Councillor Roberts seconded by Councillor Bailey. Councillor Roberts if you wouldn't mind reading that please. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a Roberts Bailey motion that report DS 87 2021 of Development Services dated April 21, 2021, regarding consent file number B85 20 and rezoning file number 27 Z74 20 be received. The consent file number B8520 for lands described as part lot 27 concession two west of Green Point, as in PE49628 parcel two, except part one 47R 5311 Ward 6 of Firesburg be approved, subject to the following conditions. And they are conditions one through 14. At zoning file number Z74-20 for lands described as part lot 27 concession two west of Greenpoint as in PE49628 parcel two, except part 147 R5311 Ward 6 of Fiesburg be approved. Okay, thank you very much. I'll ask, uh, does staff any, have any additional comments to include with the uh, staff report at this time? Through the mayor, no, we do not. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll ask if the applicant or the applicant's agent is present and if they are in agreement with the uh, conditions of approval as outlined in the report. And I see that we have, um, we have Lindsay and Calvin Reddick here um, addressing this item. Uh, through the mayor, it appears that Lindsay and Calvin are not on the Zoom. However, I was speaking with them uh, two weeks ago and they, they noted they were in uh, they had no concerns with the uh, conditions as proposed, and I was speaking with them earlier today, and, and they noted that they would be in attendance, but I, I don't know if they are. Uh, so, uh, but from my understanding, they are in agreement with the conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I don't see anybody in the audience who wishes to speak to this, correct, Chad? Your Worship, that is correct. Okay. Uh, so I will then ask if there are any questions of members of council. I don't see anybody, so I will call the vote. All those in favor, please. Show of hands. And that carries, thank you. So we'll move to item uh, 7.2, consent rezoning application, um, Daniel Jennings and Lori Jennings. Could I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Someone? Councillor Margitson, seconded by Councillor McMahon. Thank you, Your Worship. This is a Margitson McMahon motion that report DS 81 2021 of Development Services dated May 19, 2021, regarding consent files number B7120 and zoning bylaw amendment file number Z6320 be received and that consent files number B7120 for lands described as part lot 90, concession three in Mealysburg as in PE187344, save and accept PE18062, County of Prince Edward, be approved subject to the following conditions, one through 14, and that zoning by file number said 6320 for lands described as part lot 90, Concession three, Ameliasburg, as in PE187344, save and accept PE18062 in the ward of Ameliasburg be approved. Okay, thank you very much. Um, staff, are, do you have any additional comments concerning this file? Through the chair, I do not have any additional comments. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And we have uh, got two people registered to uh, speak to this item, um, but I will ask if uh, the applicants or the agent, uh, whether they are in agreement with the conditions of approval as outlined in the report. And as I say, I've got registered Christine Jennings and Hayden Campbell and Daniel and Lori Jennings. So I will ask them that question. Uh, the applicants or the agent, uh, whether they are in agreement. Hi, we are here. Uh, um, just lost everybody here. Okay. Did they're, um, they're on their way in. I apologize. Who is on their way in? 
Christine Jennings is in on her way in now. I'm and what about Daniel and Lori Jennings? I'm looking for them. I do not see them in the waiting room. Okay. I would ask um, somebody out there has got YouTube on. If you could turn YouTube off, please. Let me know when we have them uh, in the in the meeting chat. Christine, can you hear us? Yes, sorry, our internet cut out, we're here. That's okay. Okay, Christine, um, I've got you down here and with Hayden Campbell as applicants, and we've got uh, Daniel and Lori Jennings as applicants. Yes. So are you all here? Uh, everyone except for Hayden. Okay, then I will ask, um, are you in agreement with the conditions of approval as outlined in the report? Yes. Is, are you speaking on behalf of everyone, I assume? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, Chad, there is no one in the audience that is that I can see that is going to speak to this, uh, to this item? Through your worship, there is no one in the audience. Okay, thanks. So I'll ask members of council if there are any questions concerning this file, anybody? Can I see hands? Councillor Maynard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> through you, I guess, to, to staff, um, just where, where they're doing the turnaround at the, uh, at the end of Bell Road, looks like slightly behind the barn, which is why there's a little extra distance. Um, because we're doing a turnaround there, will the uh, remainder of that uh, unassumed or unused portion of, uh, of Bell Road be closed, fully closed? And conveyed and or. Um, to Councillor uh, Maynard, my understanding is is it'll remain closed. It's closed now, and it just won't be opened. the uh, The turnaround portion will be opened uh, as part of the the Bell Road uh, uh, road allowance. Okay, so is it, there was no thought to then conveying it to the owner since it's kind of a somewhat um, useless strip of land that do, it doesn't lead anywhere. Goes across no. the field. No. Okay. No. And then, all right. Um, so that entrance um, off of Bell Road is uh, proposed to be an agricultural entrance. I notice in number nine it says that um, they'll need a, an entrance to, to construct an entrance onto uh, both the County Road 19 and the um, Bell Road. But will it be? It's not going to be a typical entrance, and I'm assuming, right? If it's just an agricultural, uh, if, it's just, if it's just a field entrance off of um, Bell Road. Uh, to Councilor Maynard, to chair, sorry, through the chair to Councilor Maynard is, uh, I think those details would be, would be outlined in, in the plan that they're going to have to provide to show how the road's going to be constructed and extended. So um, it might need a culvert uh, in order to provide drainage to that wetland EP area. Um, mm -hmm. But it would follow our, our standard entrance uh, design guidelines. Yeah. Okay. But what? Yeah. But there's no no house, right? So no nine one one. That's why I was just kind of. It's just uh, somewhat what different. Now that property I, I'm looking at uh, from what has been done previously and recently, that uh, there's no resident. Is can you confirm whether there is or isn't a, a residential parcel that could be uh, built on? still on that property, considering there's been two recent severances. Are you, Dale, can you, are you, you able Dale? to answer that? Through the chairs. Just, sorry. Oh, uh, sorry, yeah. it's my understanding that that retained parcel could be eligible for a residential dwelling. Okay. So, oh, okay. All right. So even though that property's had two, even if one was considered a natural sub, even though it's had two severances, correct? All right. It hasn't had any severances. Okay, other questions of members of council, please. Anybody? No? Okay, we don't have anybody in the house, so I'll, I will call the vote on this. All those in favor, please. Can I see a show of hands? And that carries, thank you. 
So that moves us to item uh, 7.3, Leslie and Sonia Fleming in Sophiasburg. If you could have a mo mover and a seconder for this, please. Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor McMahon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a Roberts McMahon motion that report DS 80 2021 of development services dated May 19, 2021 regarding consent file numbers B73-20 and zoning bylaw amendment file number Z66-20 be received. The consent files B73-20 for lands described as part lot 42 concession one west of Greenpoint part one plan 47R 8328 save and accept part one Plan 47R 9056 in the ward of Sophiasburg be denied. That zoning file number Z6620 for lands described as part lot 42, concession one west of Greenpoint, part one, plan 47R 8328, save and accept part one, plan 47R 9056 in the ward of Sophiasburg be denied. Okay, thank you. Um... Well, I, staff, do you have any comments on this? I think um, that you'd like to bring forward. Uh, through the chair, I have no additional comments to the report. Thank you. Okay, so we've got, um, I believe we have, we, we've got Leslie and Sonia Fleming present. Um, would you like to speak to any matters concerning this file? Um, we, we feel like we've kind of been put in a pretty difficult position. Um, we were, we were told, uh, so last, last year, it was 2019, sorry, when we had a severance, um, that's right beside the severance we're looking to do, um, now. And we were told by the planning department to get that severance to go through that we had to chop our land right in half, which would be 40 meters of road frontage um, on on the severed piece. And then what would be remaining would be 40 as well. But of course the issue is, I think that for rural areas, it has to be 60, 62 or something. I don't know exactly meters road frontage. So we're trying to sever our home to sell. Um, so we're trying to sever our home off, but the retained parcel um, we're stuck with that frontage on the back and um, we actually didn't know there was it's, any uh, planning asked us to do exactly what we've done at the beginning and uh, they okay. now they've, just tried, they've tried to just uh, a second, sorry. If, if I can interrupt for a second it's going to be much more helpful for members of council and uh, and their planning staff if, if you speak one at a time yeah that's okay so to finish, I was just saying that um, it was mere, um, yeah, like he was saying is that we've, we were just kind of jumping through hoops trying to get this to happen and uh, doing everything we we're asked and following all the rules and um, getting it done. And uh, it was mere days before, if not the day before um, the first planning meeting, um, we were, we got an email out of nowhere that said, actually this is going to council and we don't approve we can't approve this because the plans i suppose hadn't been looked at um and it said oh there's not enough frontage on that back so we kind of felt like we were just led to fire like it was just from the beginning it's been a really difficult process for us like we both admit to being really frustrated with it um we just feel like i guess our argument is you know the Quinney conservation has been out there's no problems we have no neighbors there's no there's no issues that have been brought up whatsoever i think the only issue that we're being told why it can't go through is that road frontage but i mean right beside it we were told you have to have you have to cut this land in half so that's what made the road frontages 40 even on that side so we don't really know they, what else we just recently done. they tried to get us to fix the frontage which i would have been paying for two severances for they wanted me to add the 21 acres to the other two and i'm not paying for two severances for them to add 21 acres to the other two acre lot that i'd severed in 2018. okay and you were you were told this was coming to council when 
our first um our first count like our, this we were told that we wouldn't be getting the support of the planning department just days before it, our first meeting which yeah was a, i'm trying to remember in march maybe when i was able to speak and kind of voice a bit of my our frustration with it all and um though like i said quitting conservation said everything's fine we have um, we have a, a culvert and a driveway on the other side that's 40 meters and actually the pond that was an issue at the back I had dug it three years ago so it's nothing previous <laughs> okay all right um, any further staff comments about this and I'm gonna throw it open to members of council Through the chair, Noel, I have no additional comments. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to uh, throw the floor open to questions from members of um, of council, and we'll start with Councillor Roberts, representing Sophiasburg. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's a question to staff. If I remember the our um, our materials from May 19th, there was also in the text that there were other options considered and that a technical consent was at least subject to some discussion with the applicants and would be supportable by planning. Could staff sort of run us through what happened there and, and what that technical uh, option or consent approach would have been or could still be? Through the chair, uh, yes, I can speak to that. Um, that was the technical consent would add to the previously severed lands. So the lands that they are proposing to sever today would be added to the lands that they severed in 2019. They'd have approximately 90 meters of frontage and they would meet all the requirements for the rural one zone. Okay. Can I ask a supplementary? Yeah, go ahead. And yeah. that is what the applicant is saying would be an excessive cost to them uh, bearing in mind that they were informed by planning previously that they needed to have these for, this 40-40 split. Is that correct? Yes. If that's factual, that's um, not simply not fair and reasonable. Okay, who would like to, Dale, do you want to talk to this, speak to this? Uh, yes, through the chair. Um, the previous report I reviewed, it did not speak to the precise configuration of the um, lots that could be severed in the future. It spoke to that there is possibility for future severance. Okay. Further question, Councillor Roberts? Or do you want to wait and come back with one? No, I'll, I'll wait till it's um, other okay. councillors have had their input. All right, Councillor McNaughton. Further to Councillor, thank you. Further to Councillor Roberts' question, I'm wondering uh, if someone from planning staff can actually just uh, walk through what the what the process, how the process has unfolded that brings us here, because I'm not sure that um, that it's entirely clear to me. Uh, and I think that's where Councillor Roberts might have been going with his question. Yeah, I think some clarification in that regard, some of the, a little bit of the history about this tale would be appropriate. Are you able to do that or? You're on Mike. Mute. Yes, uh, through the chair. Um, the applicants reached out to us in our September, 2020, discussing a potential uh, severance on their lands. Myself and James Griffin had met the applicants at their property and discussed the potential severance. Um, at that time, it was unknown that they had 41 meters of frontage. Um, and then upon the applicants submitting the application, um, we reviewed it closer to when it was to go to council for an information meeting um, and prior to that, we discussed with the applicants the potential for rezoning the lands to open space um, and the potential for a lot addition, which the app applicants had agreed to and to agree to the technical consent 
for the lot addition. Um, and then upon further debating it, the applicants decide to continue with the severance as presented. Okay. Um, that Council may not answer your question. Not Before entirely. Council Margitson. Okay, Council Margits. Uh, Thank you. One second, please. Council Margitson will let uh, the manager of planning in. Michael. Yeah. One one thing about the fees, staff are, are unable to waive fees. So, um, if I um, Dale may be able to correct me on here, but if I remember correctly. Um, we indicated that uh, they would, for this technical consent that we spoke of a little bit earlier, uh, that they'd have to pay the fee, but we would support waiving you know, a, a file or, or a, a report that would go forward later to, to support waiving the fees, um, given that uh, you know, it would be the hardship that uh, you know, they'd be paying for three severances and only getting two lots type of thing. So there is the ability to, to waive the fees. It's just staff are unable to do that. If council wishes to waive a fee, that's at their discretion. Okay. Thank you, Council Margaretson. <laughs> thank you, then Council Prince. And I think that Mr. Michaud just partially answered my question. So if the applicant or the proponent is willing to um, merge the severed from 18 with what is proposed to be retained today and we could work out the fees we would have a solution to this is that would that be right mr michaud or that would be fine on on our end i don't know if the applicant is supportive of that right because they need to agree that there would only be two parcels left and they want to they want to sever their existing house off okay thank you Thank you, Councillor Prinson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can somebody tell me when the rules changed? Maybe I missed it. About a 45 meter severance in 18. Did we rewrite the rules since 18 that I missed the missed along the lines? That's just, it's not that it's a small lot. It just doesn't have the proper front. Or, so that's, I guess it's a simple question I'm making hard, but when did the rules change? Is that you, Dale, or, or Mike? Dale's on mute again, yeah. but it might, or was it a, like, sorry, just to follow up before he even answers. Did, yeah, go ahead. Was, it, uh, was the application in 18 also recommend denial that council went against? Like, I, I don't know. So I just could have some follow up. If we allowed it in 18, I, I know things change, but that's quite drastic in three years. Through the chair, yep. uh, the official plan and the zoning has not changed. And um, so you're on mute, Dale. Through the chair, to Councilor Prinzen, would you mind repeating your last question, please? Uh, my, my question was along the lines of the first severance in 18. Was it recommended denial and council went against planning staffs or was it recommended approval? And now we've changed the rules in the last three years for the lot frontage on, uh, on the road. Dale. Through the chair, uh, the rules have not changed and the previous application was recommended for approval. Previous application was recommended for approval. I have no further comments on this, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Councilor Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question to the applicants: If the if council could work through uh, waiving the fees involved, would that be uh, a reasonable outcome? We are, sorry, Go we ahead. are um, struggling greatly financially. It's a really difficult place to live. And really uh, all we have is our home. Um, and the 
the option to be able to keep a chunk of land for our children to romp around on and for our future to possibly be able to use. Um, I mean, we really, really, it's why we're here tonight. Like we really, really, and we just don't understand why the problem came up in the first place. Like we've been, ha like we were, we were actually told the first time um, in 2018, sorry, I said 2019 before that we had to cut that property in half. So that was it. We had the lot drawn up at 60 meters and they made us switch it to 45 in case there was another lot severed. Okay. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the right and the moral thing to do absolutely um, would be to waive the severance uh, fee that we've had to, you know, that we've paid. Um, but I mean, we, we really feel it's, it's wrong it's wrong not to I, I to feel approve like, it the way that we've been, you know, told we, we need to do it, we need to do it, and then <clears throat> led to kind of slaughter. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it should be going through the way it is. They've led me in this path. And to turn around and do this is just ridiculous. Okay. Well, if I could get someone to second, I would, I would move a motion to approve. Approve the application? Yes, given the history involved and give, given the uh, indications we've got from the applicants that they uh, were in conformity with what was requested uh, of, by planning. And uh, it would appear if, if we are dealing with the facts that at the 11th hour, that earlier indication uh, came uh, back as it in fact turned out to be a denial. So I, I just think that's unfair. And you're looking for a seconder? I am. Okay, is Councillor Prinson, is that a question or seconding? You're, That's a second. You're seconding that, okay. All right, are there any, uh, any other questions of members of council concerning this, what Councillor Roberts has put on the, uh, on the floor? Any questions? Councilor Margetson. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm going to support the Roberts Crimson motion because I think there's plenty of precedents where planning staff have recommended approval of severances based on reduced frontages. And 40 meters, 41 meters of frontage, in my opinion, with the land base that we're talking about there, will work. So I, I'll support the motion on the floor when we get the proper report back with the conditions. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? Councilor Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just would like now to turn to uh, the, ask the clerk, what is the proper yeah. process from here so that we can get this done? I would ask the same question. Chad. Yep, uh, through your worship to Councillor Roberts. So from what I can ascertain is that we're looking to defer this report to a future meeting to come back with uh, conditions. Is that correct? Chad, what I what I moved and what was seconded by Councillor Prinson was uh, a motion approved. to approve rather than deny. Okay. Approve the application as presented this evening, Chad. Yeah. Ending conditions. Madam CAO. Um, through, the, um, um, through the mayor to council, I would just recommend that if you want to approve the file because it was not recommended by staff, uh, then I suggest you give some flexibility to staff to write the conditions um, and negotiate the, the proper conditions because they may change. Uh, when this turns into a yes versus a no. So give staff some uh, time. And if the proponent and staff can't agree on conditions, we can certainly bring it back. So maybe some language around with staff working out the appropriate conditions to the satisfaction of the applicant. And if they can't achieve that, then it'll come back here. But otherwise we won't have to come back again and uh, have this go to a third meeting. Okay, so we're referring it back. Okay, Councilor Roberts. I, I, I'm okay with that approach as suggested by uh, CAO Wallace. 
provided my seconder is okay with it, but I, uh, my understanding is that with that language ad added to the motion to approve now, this will not be coming back to council. Thank Correct. you. That, that expedites demand. Consider I, Council uh, Prinzen, are you in agreement? As seconder, I would agree that. Okay. All right, so I will ask if there are any further questions concerning this, this matter, Councilor Nyman. Sure, so my question is, uh, how soon can it be done? We just don't want to drag on and on. So when will it be done? I will ask um, Mr. Egan. Uh, through, the, through the chair, I would uh, ask uh, Michael Michaud um, how long he thinks he could get it done because I'm not familiar with that process and whether or not it's just a simple conversation and having the applicants sign an agreement. Well, can we just include language that this will be done uh, as quickly as possible for the sake of the applicants? Are you in which Michael. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the chair. Um, I don't believe there's there's many conditions to really ponder on this one that might be difficult. Um, you know, we have a lot of language already for the different conditions that are typical for any severance. So we can put together a package and, and communicate with the uh, with the Flemings in, in, in quick uh, quick order to, to get something done. Um, if we are able to really push it, we could probably get something done by the end of the week. Okay. Uh, okay, wait a minute, I got hands here, but I'll go to Councillor Roberts first, then Councillor Forrester. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to make sure that this is appropriate. So subject, subject to it being appropriate, I'd appreciate the courtesy of, of uh, knowing how the process is going, coming from staff. Thank you. You mean an update? Are you referring to an update? Yes. As the progress, as yes, just, this is going through. The, for okay. Just to know, just to follow the file. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Councilor uh, Forrester, and then I think we're ready to vote on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess this question for Michael, I'm not necessarily opposed to the motion put on the floor, but I, I guess I just wanna know, what does this mean in the future and with other, uh, Lots of this nature. Does this change it for everybody now? Are we are we set precedent by doing this tonight? And what does that mean? I'll let Mr. Uh, well, Michael, you can respond to that. I think Councillor yeah. Margotson addressed some of that in his comment. Michael. Yeah. Through you, the chair. Um, a planning decision typically does not ever set a precedent because there are always different circumstances to every piece of property. Um, <laughs> however, we will get those that say, well, you, you, you supported 41 meters over there, so why aren't you supporting me here at 41 meters? Um, you know, it's unfortunate that we ended up in a, in a he said, she said um, situation with another, another planner that's no longer with the municipality, um, but it speaks volumes as to why as staff, we cannot be the applicant's planner. Uh, you know, we, we can say that well, we think this might be supportable. Here's here's what the the bylaw says. Um, but for us to go out and say, well, yeah, sever it like that, and we'll support this, and you can you yeah. will support that at a later date. That's something that staff should never ever be doing. We have no idea of what's going to happen in the future, and we can't speak to that. Uh, we simply can speak to if you want to sever something. Here's the rules, here's the, uh, the process, here's the fees, uh, submit it, we'll review it, and then council makes the final decision. We make recommendations, we don't make uh, decisions, but we cannot be the applicant's planner. And unfortunately, in this case, we ended up being, being that, and we were in the situation that we're in. Yeah, Can you just I, follow I, up, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. And thanks, Michael, and I sort of understand, and that's, I guess, my question, because I don't really see this as being a unique property in any way. So as more of these come forward and we've seen a lot of these long narrow strips, could this not be a game? 
council being looked at this and say, well, you've done this. And what's different from me than multiple properties like this that I've seen over the years? Uh, it's through you, Mr. Chair, to Council Forrester. You're absolutely right. Um, you do it once and then you, where do you draw the line, right? That there, therein lies the difficulty with creating these long, narrow severances. Um, you know, at some point in time, you, you, you know, when we did the official plan, we talked about, you know, climate change and reducing the number of people within the rural area that have to drive everywhere, um, maintaining the rural character by, by having large lots as opposed to long and skinny lots. Um, you know, we, I think I even mentioned when driving down a country road, you don't want to see mailbox after mailbox after mailbox, you kind of there's a farmhouse and then a bunch of fields and then maybe another farmhouse and maybe somebody's house, that, that, that's fine. But if we have all these thin lots throughout uh, uh, a roadway in the country, um, we kind of lose the country. We end up just seeing the mailboxes and the houses. And uh, I don't know if that's the look that uh, we want for Prince Edward County. Okay, I think we're thank we're, you. We're we're straying into a much larger conversation, but I, I think your point about independent planning advice is uh, is quite appropriate, Michael. Um, any other questions? I don't see any, so I will ask: Are you satisfied with this? Uh, Steve, you're breaking up on my end. Are you anyway. guys okay with this? Let's, okay, all right. Well, I assume that everybody's in agreement on the, on the applicant side, so I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor, please. We're voting on what was put forward by Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Prince. Okay, show of hand to hold you guys up as a result of the recess a couple of weeks ago. Okay, that it carries. So much. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll move now to item, um, where are you? 7.4. Um, if we could have just scroll through here, a mover and a seconder to put 7.4 North Marysburg item onto the floor, please. That's Councillor Bailey, seconded by Councillor St. Jean. Thank you, Worship. This Bailey. is a Bailey St. Jean. Okay. This is a, this is a Bailey St. Jean motion. That report DS 82 2021 of Development Services dated May 19th, 2021, regarding consent files number B7520 and B7620 and zoning bylaw amendment file Z 6820 be received. That consent files B7520 and B7620 for lands described as part lot A concession lakeside east of Cape Fessy, North Marysburg being part seven. 47R 8827, subject to PE 159890, County of Prince Edward be approved, subject to the following conditions, one through 12, that zoning file Z6820 for the lands described as part lot A, concession lakeside east of Cape Bessie, North Marysburg being part seven, 47R 8827, subject to PE. 159890 and the Ward of North Marysburg be approved. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, staff, are there any further comments concerning this file? Through the chair, I have no additional comments to the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the uh, I'll ask if the applicant or the agent is present, and I see you, Brendan. And are you in agreement with the conditions as outlined in the report? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my name is Brendan O'Connor. I'm a land use planning consultant. I'm here as the agent for the applicants. So we've reviewed the um, staff report and are in agreement 
and would just like to point out um, the applicants uh, worked with staff in addressing some of the concerns that were brought forward with respect to um, water. Um, there's existing wells on the subject lands. Um, the well reports are, are quite positive and meet the minimum requirements. Um, however, they did agree um, uh, with staff's recommendation to add a line item to condition number nine, which basically reads that the owner acknowledges that if the existing wells are to be replaced or relocated, a drawdown test will be required to show that there'll be no negative impacts on neighboring wells. Um, we feel that that, um, that addition um, um, suffices to address any of the concerns and um, I'm here to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, so if we've got one member of the, uh, the public that wishes to speak. I've got um, Murray Smith. Murray, I see you're with us. And you want to comment on this on this item? Yes, uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep, you're coming in loud and can clear. I'll remind you, you, yes, you can. I'll remind you, you've got five okay. minutes. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Ferguson, uh, councillors. Uh, thank you for hearing my comment. Uh, I'll only be about two minutes. Um, I have only two points to make. It's puzzling to me how the severance application was advanced after the initial planning uh, meeting when I, I had the impression that the wells also Okay, Murray, um, you're gonna have to repeat that. You're on mute. We didn't catch that last um comment. I thought you were saying you were curious about the wells. So pick it up. Uh, from now. Yes. Uh, it's, if the county policy is to only test in the wet season, then why bother testing at all? Um, in my correspondence with planning, it was stated that the Quinty Conservation had no objection to the application as presented. I think it's a bit of a stretch to infer that they support a single well test in the wet season. Other well testers first empty the tiles, then measure what flows in. If the policy is now to approve partial water supply and then rely on tankers, then I'm wasting our time commenting. Any property is gonna qualify for severance on uh, the basis of uh, water. I believe a well tester etc. I know that the well tests were done in October after the fall rains, which were about eight inches. The two dry holes dug in the summer had no water in, as one could see from the spoil coming out of the excavations. The well is dug 30 feet from my property line. The holes and well casing went full would take an hour to empty at 20 gallons a minute. After that, there's no more water going to come in in the dry summers. My second point of puzzlement is how a decision can be made at this time in view of the stated policy that any area of five hectares can only be severed if there are five or less residential units. Now, including the seven earth cabins on the adjoining hectare, still under discussion, I count 10 potential units on the five hectares, or do cabins not count as residential units? The cabins are, however, accommodation as defined in the official plan glossary. In conclusion, I think any decision on this severance is premature. It would seem to me if we're going to continue to sever the county into three acre lots without adequate water, there should be a new category of property with an LW label. The limited water or LW annotation would identify lots to buyers and the building department that would require tankers, rain collection systems or cisterns to provide adequate water. That, those are my only comments. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mary. We'll see if uh, there are any questions. Seeing none, I'll open the floor to questions from members of council about this application. Anybody have anything they would like to uh, ask? <clears throat> I don't see anybody. So I will call the vote. Um, all those in favor, please. Show of hands. Uh, 
And that carries. Thank you very much. And moves us to item 7.5, the plan of subdivision for Wellington Bay Estates. If we could have a mover and a seconder for this, please. Mover, someone to put this on the floor, please. Councillor Harper, seconded by Councillor uh, Margotson. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Harper Margotson, motion that the report of development services department dated April 21, 2021 regarding draft plan of subdivision file number 13T-17-502 and zoning bylaw amendment file number Z46-20 be received. And that for lots located on part of lots 123, 21, 22, 23, and 43 registers compiled plan number 16, part of lots 50, 61, 63, 64, 65, 66, 7, 8, 69, and 70, all of lots 1-60, 71 registrars compiled plan number 15, part of lot 193 registered plan 8 Wellington, Wellington Ward in the municipality of County of Prince Edward, plan of subdivision file number 13T-17-502, be given draft approval subject to conditions of draft approval and that zoning application file number Z46-20, Wellington Bay Estates, for lands described as part of lots 1, 2, 3, 21 through 23 and 43 registers, compiled plan number 16, part of lots 50, 61, 63, 64, 65, 6, 67, 68, 69, and 70, all of lots 1-60, 71 registrars compiled plan number 15, part of lot 193 registered plan eight Wellington, Wellington Ward of Municipality, the County of Prince Edward be approved. Okay, thank you. Um, now staff members, have you got any mm -hmm. comments about this? I think it would be appropriate to do a little bit of a walkthrough for members of council. Um, yes, thank you. So through the chair, just, just a quick uh, technical note in the uh, draft plan conditions. Um, there's a section under stormwater management that refers to a number of blocks and lots that are to be deeded to the municipality. And I uh, just wanted to note that the, the block is 156 and it's lots 11 through 20. So we'll just make a note of that. Uh, the applicants are aware of that. It was a um, clerical, clerical error on, on our part. The, um, the draft plan had changed and, and the block numbers had been revised. Um, fairly recently. So that's that's the purpose of that change. Um, so I, I don't really, I didn't prepare a presentation. So uh, I, I don't have much to, more to add other than what was said in the report. So if there, if there are specific questions, I can certainly answer them. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in, in due course. We've got a number of people that um, have pre-registered to address this, but I will ask the applicant or the agent, um, if they have any comments on whether they're in agreement with the conditions as outlined in the report. And I don't know who is here to speak to this. We've got, uh, well, got Martin, got Spencer, Darby, Nancy. So who'd like to respond to that? One or any of you. I, um, I can respond to that. We are happy. Hey, Darby Burke out here. We are happy with the uh, conditions and we agree with them. Okay. And uh, okay. And we've got a number of people. So you are, Darby, you're joined by uh, Martin. Who else is with you? Spencer and Nancy. That That's correct? correct. Okay. So we've got um, eight people who are registered to make comments. Um, and I assume, Chad, that they are present or you're let, letting them in on the basis of the order I see in front of me, which would be William Pennell first. Your Worship, that is correct with the order in front of you and uh, Bill Pennell is in the Zoom call. <clears throat> okay, uh, there he is, okay. Welcome, Mr. Pennell, if I could uh, just ensure you have YouTube off um, as you make your comments and reminder, you've got five minutes. So go ahead. 
Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor and uh, Councillors. My name is uh, William Pennell. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at this meeting. I would like to indicate my support for the proposed Wellington Bay Estates program. I live in Wellington and the Wellington on the Lake community. I'm an active member of this community and of Wellington as a member of the Wellington Valley. The reason for my support for this project is I believe that the Wellington Bay Estates development will bring various economic, social, and health and reconciliation benefits to Wellington and Prince Edward County in general. From an economic point of view, the project with close to new homes to be built will bring many hundreds of new jobs to Wellington during the construction phase and will support and enhance the many small and medium sized businesses in Wellington and the surrounding area for many years to come. Additional homes will all add to our tax base, and along with the developer of the United States, will assist in the to undertake some of the much needed infrastructure improvements. Bill, can I just interrupt for one second? You are you. I think we're capturing the gist of this, but there's if there's anything you can adjust because you are breaking up a bit. Okay. Um, Have you got YouTube off? I do. It's the sound that's breaking up. Yeah. Can you make my volume a little louder? Is that better? Well, that that may help a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So carry carry on. Um, to what point did you hear? Well, we I think we caught most of it. It was just it, it was a little bit difficult, but keep going. Okay. I know you're in support. Very good. And I talked about the economic benefits, uh, the additional jobs and supporting the community and uh, additions to the tax base. Can you hear me on that? Yep. Thank you. So on the social side, the mix of housing to be built in the Wellington Bay Estates includes detached facilities and townhomes. Over 40% of the new homes will be in the more affordable category. This will allow a wider range of residents from young families to retirees to all live in the same development integrated into the village. The health and recreation benefits will be generated by the building of a medical recreation center, which will offer medical services to all of Wellington, and the rec center will offer paid public access to all, to, as well as private services. Green space is indicated in the project with a linear park running from Wellington Main Street to the Millennium Trail, providing a welcome recreational benefit to both Wellington residents and visitors to Prince Edward County. So I respectfully ask that the Wellington Bay Estates project be granted approval as the balance as I am noted will bring additional prosperity to Wellington and Prince Edward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just hang on for one sec, see if there's anybody that has a question for Mr. Pennell. Anybody? No, thank you very much for your time and my apologies again for any inconvenience as of the 19th of, of uh, May at the first meeting. Okay, that moves us to um, the second pre-registered speaker, which is Jerry Stewart. Through your worship, Jerry is well, entering the meeting as we speak. He's connecting. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jerry. Hi, how are you? Uh, I think we're all Fine, thank you. But if I could ask you to turn off YouTube if you've got it on. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. And a reminder that you've got five minutes. Oh, I, I just have five minutes? Yep. And the floor is yours. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm here. I'm, my name is Jerry Stewart, and I'm here to support Wellington Bay Estates. I've been living in Wellington for four years now. Uh, we came from Bowmanville and the, the county is absolutely fabulous. However, I do believe we need more uh, population and the only way to get it is to build more houses. We, uh, we presently live in an adult community and as you know, we're all getting older and there, there's not an awful lot of young people around. With a new subdivision, we're going to get new people, and that's going to help us all with our taxes. Uh, taxes are not going to go down. I don't think I've ever known taxes to go down every year. So they do need um, 
you know, for roads, whatever, more population will help us there. As well, Wellington is, I think it's going to start either late this year or next year, is going to get a new water tower. And the, uh, the system will be a complete uh, circular system rather than stop at the end. Everybody in the town or in, in Wellington and the area will get better water pressure. As well, a new popu additional population will bring more business to the present businesses and possibly bring new businesses in. So uh, that's, that's my reasons for supporting uh, Wellington Bay Estates. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Is that, that it? Okay, I'll, I'll ask if there are any questions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure you were finished. Oh yeah, no, I'm finished. Okay. okay. Any uh, questions of uh, Jerry? Seeing none, thank you very much for taking the time. All right, thank will, you. I, I will apologize you, again. I hope you all agree I, with me and approve, approve it. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. So next we are up to uh, Jeffrey Telling. And Jeffrey, you're there. If I could ask if you've got YouTube on to please turn it off. And yeah. I, I recognize you from the last meeting. And I, it, even though I said at the beginning of the meeting, I want to apologize for the inconvenience of having to come back twice. But uh, you've got five minutes and we look forward to your comments. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor Ferguson and councillors, and thank you for letting me give my opinion on this. Um, my name is Jeff Telling. I've lived in Wellington since 2014, and I've seen a great deal of change in that time. But my feeling right now is that the village of Wellington and the county has hit the wall in some respects. And the two particular respects that this wall, I see this wall is uh, hitting, is the issue with water and wastewater, which I've looked into a great deal. I've listened to lots of talks and presentations by various opinions. And the other thing is the situation we have at the boat launches stroke rotary beach area. Now, both those aspects of in infrastructure are going to be extremely costly to sort out, but there is no choice. We have to sort them out. So I see the way forward that we will need more population in Wellington in order to give us the tax base to make those necessary improvements. Otherwise, we'll be sort of stagnating. We'll be stuck with issues that really uh, are, aren't going to be resolved unless we take some bold steps to sort them out. Um, essentially, obviously, I'm, I'm behind the, the idea. I'm also in favor of the idea that we should broaden the demographic and hopefully that it's in, in with this increased housing that we will have um, a wider range of, of, of people coming and living in Wellington, young people as well as the older demographic that we're seeing right now. Uh, so for all those reasons, um, I'm, I'm behind this plan. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Questions from members of council, anybody? Nope. Thank you very much for taking the time. You're welcome. And now we'll move on to Derek Mendham, who I recognize. Hi, Derek. Welcome. If you wouldn't mind uh, making sure YouTube is off so we don't get feedback. Let's let's test your audio. No, you're you're not coming through very well at all. Let's let's test the audio again, Derek. Uh, that's about as good as I get at this point. Okay, well let's let's give it a shot, but I would ask you to speak slowly. YouTube is off. It is off. Okay, then just speak slowly so we can uh, we can absorb what you're hearing. 
but welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. My name is Derek Menhan. I live in uh, Wellington. Uh, to be more specific, I live in Wellington on the lake. I'm currently the president of Wellington on the Lake Residents Association, which is a residents association that represents about 800 members in the community of Wellington on the Lake. We've been following UV uh, since it was first proposed back in 2019, I believe, as well as all of the water discussions. Um, as a board of Residents Association, we presented the WBE concept and draft plan to our members in a motion and the membership voted uh, over 72% in favor of supporting the WBE uh, project for the village of Wellington. We believe that uh, WBE will be a reasonable and sensible addition uh, to this wonderful place we all call home. We think uh, that it is current form, uh, which has changed in the past couple of years. It will be an asset to the county and Wellington and fit with the official plan and satisfy the increased demand for housing while not detracting from the village, but in fact enhancing the village. I moved here five years ago because I love the county and in particular the village of Wellington. I would find it very difficult to support anything that I believe would be a, wouldn't be a positive benefit to the place that I have chosen to live. The demand for housing in our community is high. That's not news to anybody. That's evidenced by the soaring home prices and the high demand for homes. And WBE will provide an important extension to the village. It will provide an important economic benefit to Wellington and Prince Edward County and it will support the local economy during construction and after completion. And it will drive economic support to our village by adding to the overall tax base and helping to spread the high cost of water among more customers. Uh, the project will also drive infrastructure development, which will then enable more development in the future without the huge impacts on the current ratepayers and economic benefits will naturally ensue. Also, uh, WBE will provide hundreds of jobs during construction and beyond, and it will also provide some needed healthcare facilities and services for people in the village of Wellington. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the economic benefits, uh, we believe that the WBE draft plan includes many features that will make the project a positive addition to the village. The plan includes green space, including the large pond, the park, the linear park, which we really support with its link between Main Street and Millennium Trail. All the roads have sidewalks, street lights, the roads integrate well with the village. All of the things that people have said did not happen in Wellington on the Lake now appear to be in WBE. The point is that WBE for us seems to improve, have improved on what we have in Wellington on the Lake without harming, but enhancing the village. There's also a variety of homes in affordable towns, singles, semis, the medical rec center, they all have services capable to offer to everyone. In total and in summary, uh, the Wellington on the Lake Residents Association, which I'm representing, believe the project should receive approval since the economic and social benefits and impacts on the village and county are overwhelmingly positive. Thank you for listening to me, Mr. Mayor and councillors. Thanks, Derek. Any questions of Mr. Mendham? Anybody? No? Nope. Okay, seeing none, thank you very much, Derek, for taking the time to join us. Thank you. So we'll move now to Alan Smith. 
who is speaking to this item? Through you to your worship, they are entering the meeting now, Pam and Alan. Pam and Alan, okay, there they are. I just, just see Alan, thank you, Alan, for joining us. It sounds like you've got YouTube on, if you could turn that off, please. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen of council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just, uh, just one, one sec, Alan. Uh, okay. Is you is YouTube off? Yes. Okay. All right, that's fine. Thank you for joining us. And um, go ahead. You've got five minutes. Welcome. Thank you again. Um, my name is Alan Smith. I. Uh, <clears throat> I moved to uh, Wellington from Oshawa uh, several years ago. Uh, and I think I'm fairly representative of the uh, demographic that will be attracted to uh, WBE. And I thought I'd approach it uh, for, you know, as representative of that uh, demographic. What, what I found uh, changed as soon as I uh, moved here, um, my focus on a, on a charitable uh, donation uh, standpoint, moved away from corporate uh, donations like the Heart and Stroke and the Cancer Society and the MS, and it's um, totally now focused uh, locally. I, I now uh, have supported the Food Bank, Hospice, the Hospital Build Fund, ROC, Alternatives for Women, the County FM, and Kate's Rest got my uh, fishing equipment a couple of weeks ago. I've uh, volunteered my time uh, with Barry Davidson clearing brush on the trail. I've uh, worked the last couple of uh, volunteer events uh, uh, with uh, Debbie Moynes uh, of Community Care. Um, I've been a participant in a half a dozen uh, Wellington uh, parades. Um, and I've worked the last uh, five or six uh, Earth Days picking up trash. Um, In, a, in addition to the, the charitable and the uh, community and involvement, my wife and I, I must eat out two or three times a week. We, we, we tend to shop uh, locally. Um, we tend to employ uh, local tradesmen wherever we can and buy locally wherever we can. Um, you know, as a demographic, we're not competing with uh, uh, people for jobs. We're not gonna be bugging uh, council for uh, schools or playgrounds or crosswalks or busing. We will be though, as a demographic, uh, highly supportive of the new hospital in uh, Picton. Um, we pay our taxes happily. Uh, we pay our water bills grudgingly and would love to have some more of us uh, living here to help carry that load. So I'm fully in a support of uh, uh, Wellington Bay Estates. And we'd hope that we get on with things quickly. All right. Thank you very much, Alan. Are, are you are you finished? Yes, I'm okay. Done. Thank you. We'll ask members of council if they have any question for any questions for Alan. Anybody? Nope. Thank you very much, Alan, for coming back again. Okay, Chad, we have, uh, we're now on to William Cobbin, who I see is with us. Quickly. Run away. Uh, thank you very much, Alan. Are, are you, are you finished now? Okay, thank you. Mr. Mr. Cobbin, I, I could tell by that um, look of shock on your face when I called your name that you, uh, you have you YouTube on. Coming back again. You could turn that off. Chad, we have, uh, we're now on to. Where is Mr. To you, your worship, it looks like uh, Bill has left the meeting. Um, sometimes people get kicked out and they're let right back in. So maybe we will give him a minute or two, a couple seconds anyways. Or do we want to move on to Kevin Scanlon? Well, is Kevin Scanlon? He's in the waiting room. Here. Mr. Scanlon's in the waiting well, room. Well, let's let's see who uh, then let's see who gets here first.
Okay, Kevin, are you there? He's connecting to audio. Okay. William is in the waiting room. Do you want me to let him back in? Well, we've got Mr. Scanlon is here, so let's let's uh, listen to him, and then we will go back to uh, William Cobbin. Okay. Kevin, can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Can you? And you've turned YouTube off? Yes, I have. Okay, terrific. Then uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And you have five minutes to um, express your comments. Thank you. My name is Kevin Scanlon. I live on Narrow Street in Wellington. Morning is a magical time in the heart of this village. Some of us are out for a stroll, others stopping for a coffee or to pick up the mail. We say hello to parents walking their children to school. We nod to shopkeepers opening their doors. What makes Wellington a great place to live is the wonderful mix of people, young and old. Some of us are seniors, but not all of us. We live beside people who work and raise their families here. And our homes are visually interesting to the point where we can say, the house with the white picket fence or the gray house with the white trim and people know exactly what we mean. Wellington is a vibrant small community. Unfortunately, the plan for Wellington Bay Estates falls far short of this ideal. It totally lacks a neighborhood feel and looks like a carbon copy of Wellington on the Lake, a retirement subdivision that excludes young people. Where is the reasonable housing that will allow the young to get into the real estate market and build a future in this village? The vast majority of the houses in this planned development are obviously aimed at retirees. And if you wonder why it is so important to have young people coming to the county, then simply look at the businesses that have been created over the past decade. On main streets in Picton, Bloomfield and Wellington, young people have made their entrepreneurial dreams a reality. They are the ones that have the drive and the energy to put in the 16 hour days necessary to get a business off the ground. Midtown Brewery is one such success story in our village. And even the established businesses are changing. Both Foodland and Nash's Home Hardware in Wellington are now being run by the next generations. We need more of this exciting group of young people, but where will they live? They will undoubtedly be priced out of Wellington Bay Estates. They will also be turned off by the cookie cutter concept of housing that looks like it came out of a Don Mills suburb half a century ago. There is no green space in this plan, nowhere to walk a dog, nowhere for children to play. There are other practical issues. The stormwater pond has been plunked into the subdivision plan with no green space around it that would, might make it a feature instead of a fenced off utility. There are people living in Wellington on the lake who are still furious that a massive stormwater ditch borders their properties. In closing, I would point to the secondary plan which stipulates that residential development should include a mix of housing options that fits with the rest of the village. I would suggest that this subdivision be built in phases to ensure that it does not become a seniors only enclave. The first phase should include townhouses and other more reasonably priced forms of housing. This should not be what is described in the plan as to be discussed. This should be discussed right now. I know that developers and planners get fixated on lines on a map, but we should never lose sight of the soul of a community, or in this case, the future of our village. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Kevin. I'll ask members of council if they have any questions of Mr. Scanlon. Seeing none, thank you very much, Kevin, for joining us and uh, expressing your comments. So now we are back to um, Mr. Cobbin. It is on lines on a map. We should never lose sight of the soul of the community. Now, or in this Mr. Case, the Mr. Cobbin, um, if, if you could ensure that YouTube is off, ask members of council if they have any questions of Mr. Scanlon. 
Seeing none, thank you very much, Kevin, for joining us and uh, expressing your comments. So now we are back to um, Mr. Cobbin. Well, I'm sorry about that. And uh, Mr. Cobbin, we are getting feedback as a result of you too. If you could turn that off. All right, I'm, 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 uh, I'm trying to do that. I'm not sure what's happening here. How are things now? Now I'm muted. Okay, that uh, I, I think that's much better. Let's test you, the audio again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're, you you're coming me. through. All right. Again, so, I, I, I apologize. I'll get rolling here. Okay. Uh, so you. good evening. About five minutes. My name is Bill Cobbin, and I've owned a home in Wellington for the past 20 years. Uh, I've been following the Wellington Bay Estates Project, attending the open house back in 2019 and speaking at a public meeting last August. And frankly, I'm surprised that Planning Services has recommended it. I say this because there are so many unanswered questions, so much we still don't know. A few decades ago, a badly flawed deal was made where the developer de dedicated land for the arena and in return was giving the right to build a subdivision without providing parkland, zero parkland. This was a huge mistake, obviously ignored at the time, but now decades later, you are stuck with fixing it. You will have to decide if this is good planning, meaning will it benefit Wellington? The subdivision has 206 houses, accommodating 400, maybe 500 residents. The project is tucked behind a string of existing homes on Wellington's eastern boundary. Only one road connects to the main street. Detached homes ring the perimeter and are close together, almost wall-like, facing inward. And in the center, where you might expect parkland, water features, benches, trees, and walkways, you see three blocks of back-to-back -back townhouses. Check the draft plan and imagine what it's gonna look like with street parking and cars in every driveway. It's isolated. There's no footpaths linking to the Millennium Trail to the north, nothing connecting Lehigh Arena to the west, just grid roads leading to dead ends. Suggesting more to come, but with no master plan, it's hard to know what. The plan itself is totally unremarkable, a bland series of boxes cribbed from a 70s developer's playbook, not the kind of progressive, sustainable design we expect here in the 21st century. We don't know who this will be marketed to, but it sure doesn't feel like built for families. A project this size needs at least an acre of green space. Instead, there's nothing, no communal area, nowhere to walk on a summer's eve, Nowhere for kids to play. It's not family friendly and it shows, which is troubling because these are the very folks we need to make our community sustainable. So if it's not for the young working families, who are the developers targeting? Here's a clue, a common element condominium corporation. This is a relatively new type of shared ownership made up of elements like a pool, spa, meeting rooms, edu recreation facilities in a private club-like setting. Your development services report mentions discussions about such a corporation. Block 157, top of the plan if you have it, has even been identified as the likely site. So instead of a public park, it's possible that a private members only enclave is being quietly embedded into this subdivision. The report notes that a common elements condo would be of limited benefit to anyone who wasn't a member. In other words, the only recreational area with any green space, any green space would be for private members only. So who's, who are they actually targeting this, democratic, this uh, demographic for? We know from an earlier public meeting that the development's original description used the, the term aging in place. In other words, a private community development for seniors. If true, it explains why there is so little to attract young families who would be more interested in daycare than a private club membership. Of course, there's no details about this in the draft plan. 
Your planning services report adds that more discussion is required, but why would this be after draft, sorry, but this would be after draft approval, after approval. Why would you agree to that? We have a large population of retirees who are well served here in Wellington. Why endorse another private community built for that demographic? How does that really help Wellington? There are just so many unknowns. At the bottom of the draft plan, there are two large blocks marked townhomes, blocks 152 and 55, with an adjacent private road. Nobody knows what that's for or what those townhouses will look like. More private development? We just don't know. Who would ever approve a plan you know so little about? Councillors, I briefly tried to show that there is a lot about this project that you don't know and no decision should be made until you do. Don't agree to support a decade old mistake. We need answers first. Examine the contract that gave away the green space. Ask the developers to explain their private members club. Who is their target buyer? Will there ever be public green space? And most important, how does Wellington really benefit from this kind of development? We don't need more development. We need more good development. Send this one back. And thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, and questions of uh, members of council for Mr. Cobbin. Anybody? No? Thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. Mr. Cobbin. So we will move on now to uh, Trish Warren. Through to you, Your Worship. Trish is not in the waiting room. Okay, then we will I'm, move on to, we've got Debbie Eaton and or Paul Edmonds. Paul Edmonds is in the meeting. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm, I'm here. Hi, Mr. Edmonds. Welcome. Uh, if I could ask you if you have YouTube on to turn it off. So we can uh, we can hear you clearly. Uh, we uh, don't have. Okay, then I will. Um, uh, then I welcome, and you've got five minutes to make your comments. Thanks very much, and uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, and to the other members of council and, and guests, if there are any there tonight. Uh, my name is Paul Edmonds, as indicated. My wife uh, Debbie Eaton and I are full time residents of the county. We purchased our home in Wellington on McDonald Street uh, in 2014. My comments tonight pertain to the uh, planning approval sought by Wellington Bay Estates. We are aware that uh, the principles of Sandbanks Homes uh, are also uh, involved uh, with the Wellington Bay Estates uh, community. Uh, and the uh, Sandbanks Homes is, of course, an adult-only uh, community. We appreciate, my wife and I, that uh, there's no reference in the Wellington Bay Estates application to the being um, a adults-only uh, community. Uh, however, we feel quite strongly that if approval is given, that it be uh, conditioned uh, and legally enforceable condition um, that it not become or not be a adult only um, development and community. Our, we have two reasons for our, 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 our thoughts in this regard. Uh, both of them come from our personal experience uh, with uh, Wellington on the lake. And uh, the first one uh, concerns the nature of their uh, regulations that govern that community. Um, the Debbie and I for a time last year, um, considered buying a house in, uh, in Wellington on the lake. And for a number of reasons, we decided not to do that. But one of the main reasons uh, was because we learned that it's, you cannot um, have um, uh, your children uh, stay in the house uh, if, if you're not present or if someone who's at least 55 years of age is not present. And you know, we found that to be, um, uh, frankly, a deal breaker because of uh, you know the importance of uh, our having our family uh, around, even if we're not there. And um, we, uh, you know, feel that that does nothing to build the kind of community that uh, Wellington uh, currently is and, and, and should remain in the future. 
And the second one um, pertains uh, to uh, an experience that we had last year with the um, uh, Wellington uh, Clear Garbage Bag uh, Trial campaign. Uh, Debbie was uh, very involved with that. And when the time came to plan the uh, town hall meetings, um, the people from Wellington on the Lake insisted on having their own separate meeting, and that was private, um, non uh, only um, residents and uh, uh, owners of uh, Wellington on the Lake could attend. Uh, of course, we had a, a fully open public meeting uh, at the Wellington uh, Town Hall, um, which was open to the world. And um, I think that it, it illustrates the, the point that uh, uh, these adult only communities uh, are quite closed and inward looking in their nature. And that's not the kind of uh, community uh, that we want to see. Uh, Wellington currently has about 1,800 residents. Uh, there are 500 uh, residents uh, living in uh, Wellington on the lake. So if Wellington Bay Estates um, were to become an adult only community, fully half the population uh, would be living um, in that kind of community, which is you know, heavily regulated, which encourages inward looking behaviors and uh, that's not what we want and, uh, and we don't frankly know anyone um, who would favor having another uh, adult only community. So thank you Mr. Mayor and council members. Uh, those are my comments for tonight. Thank you very much Paul. Thank you for uh, joining us. Any questions from members of council for Mr. Edmonds? No, I don't see any, Paul. Thank you very much for taking the time. And I, yeah. and I, I apologize for any inconveniences. As a not, result not, of not, not at all. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Clerk, I've got uh, the only person left here is Trish Warren. Has she shown up? Through your worship, she has not shown up. Okay, <clears throat> then we will move on to... Um, questions of members of council. I'm sure there are going to be several. So anybody have a question that they'd like to bring forward concerning this application? We'll start with Councillor Harper. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I'm certainly not in favor of uh, this um, subdivision plan as, as presented. I do have an amendment amending motion, uh, which I have a seconder for, and I will get to that after everyone's had a chance to, to have their say. Um, just a few comments from me, first of all, though. Um, I think one of the important things for me is um, to understand the context in which this is happening. So I think we're all pretty aware that, that Wellington um, has been caught by surprise with the amount of growth that's planned for the community. Uh, we've seen that in reactions to our water wastewater infrastructure issues and uh, certainly a lot of people unhappy about not only the cost of that but the the, the potential numbers of people coming to wellington in the future and um, yeah. so i think i think that we are are under a lot of pressure i think we're under a lot of pressure to to try to limit growth and and to slow the pace of change and i think quite frankly many residents would be happy if we had um, if we just stuck with the two draft approved subdivisions that we already do have. So I guess the point here basically is that um, if we're going to entertain additional applications like this, that they have to be a quality application, it has to be a quality um, plan. And, and I do have a lot of concerns about that. Um, and I think the, the first thing for me is just the fit uh, with Wellington. And um, I think it's important to you know, look to the secondary plan, uh, specifically the visual, uh, the village residential area, which is where this would, would be located and, and what, what we ask of development in the village residential area. Uh, and I'll just quote a little bit here, um, that these areas are intended to preserve and enhance the quality of place by ensuring that new residential neighborhoods are more like Wellington's existing traditional neighborhoods in terms of design and walkability and to ensure that neighborhood development occurs in as, a, as an extension of the surrounding existing village fabric and blends the built form and character of existing neighborhoods in Wellington. And uh, I think when you look at the, um, 
the schematic for this development that it doesn't in any way reflect other uh, parts of the, the village of Wellington. Um, some of the other things that we, we've heard already, I don't really see that there is a, a master plan that shows how this development is going to integrate um, with the community. We have no sense of where the various roads are gonna connect. We have no sense of active transport connecting, for example, to uh, the Millennium Trail. Um, I think it's been mentioned, uh, the, the park land, the green space, um, a linear park, frankly, I, I'm surprised you could even call that a park. It's just another boulevard. So I really think there's frankly very little in the way of, of a proper usable green space. When you think about 400 people, um, you think about the Northern part of this, um, uh, a bigger project being developed, how is all that going to fit into and dovetail with this particular um, application? Uh, the townhouses, we don't know what the elevations are. We don't know what um, the, uh, the number of units are. We don't know what sort of price points are entertained for it. Um, and I think as one of our speakers said, there's simply a lot of unknowns. Many of those things are addressed in the uh, conditions and I really think they need to be brought forward and be part of the plan we actually pass. So those are my initial thoughts and I'll turn it over to the rest of you to speak and then I'll come back with uh, when appropriate with my amending motion, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I've got Councillor Hirsch, and then Councillor Nyman, and then Councillor Margotson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have um, two questions for staff, if I could, uh, and they, they're related to uh, questions or comments that came from uh, members of the public who spoke, and, and I'll just, they're, they're brief, and hopefully staff can, can fill in the blanks. Um, there was a qu question about the amount of green space. Um, so could staff um, you know, provide some better uh, assessment of uh, how much green space will be uh, provided in the, uh, in the subdivision? And the, uh, the second one was this concept of the potential for being a, a private community only and uh, where do we stand on that in terms of our, our knowledge or ability to control that through this application? Thanks. Who wants to uh, deal with that? Is that... We got all the staff members here. Well, we got Mike. Uh, oh, there, Matter. Yeah. Matt. This you? Yes. Okay. Um, so, thank you. Good questions. So, through the chair, Councillor Hirsch, um, I think I'll touch on the parkland first. Um, this project has been in the works for a number of years I, I believe the file number well the file number itself is 2017 so you know that that's that's four years ago that we first received the application and then there was discussions prior to that so I, I personally came into this a little bit late in the game um, my understanding of the parkland is that there were previous developments um, that, that preceded uh, Wellington Bay Estates and that the land where the arena currently sits was part of the an original parkland dedication and that there was no requirement for additional parkland to be allocated as part of this development so that's how that's how we got to the point that we're at um with the green space or the lack thereof so the only two areas where there is any green space proposed is the linear parkway, which um, we did have quite a bit of discussion with the developer on that. And they did come up with a road cross section that we agreed upon. Um, and that cross section is included with the drop plan conditions. And the idea is that that would eventually create a linear green space between Wellington Main Street and the Millennium Trail. Um, the other green space location is just north of the stormwater pond. It's indicated as block 169. And the idea would be to blend that green space in with the stormwater facility um, once there has been a, a design that, um, that is acceptable. And, and of course, we don't have a design for the pond as of yet. Um, there, there is another condition in the, in the conditions of approval that speak to block 156 and lots 11 through 20 that would be deeded to the municipality. 
as part of the stormwater design, uh, should that be required. So the idea is to try to blend in some additional green space with the stormwater pond, but uh, again, we, we wouldn't know for sure until, um, until that uh, pond has been, has been designed. So that, that's kind of the background on the green space and the parkland issue. Um, yeah, you know, I, I wish I could provide a little bit more, but that, but that's kind of where where we're at with that. Um, the adult community comment. So, in, in my staff report, I, I did refer to some discussions about condominium, and that staff would not necessarily be in support of that type of development. Um, our concern with a condominium arrangement. With Wellington Bay Estates is that it would lead to an adult community that uh, that we were just uh, that the resident had had raised to or had discussed with us. Um, we want a, a community a development here that blends in with Wellington, and um, we want a diverse range of people who will want to live here. We don't want to see it become a a retirement community. We don't want to see it to become a Wellington on the lake on the east. So. That's that's kind of where we stand on on the idea of a condominium. Um, so if, if there were an application to come forward, we'd ha we'd have to give some serious consideration to, to that. Um, but at, at this point, they have there there is no application for a condo, and the community center that is proposed right now has a number of permitted uses, but my understanding is that they would not be part of a condominium organization. So hopefully that answers your questions that I can try to delve into it further if needed. Thank you. Yes, just a quick follow-up. Quick, quick follow just yeah. so just to be clear then, if, if they were to propose this to become a condominium, uh, as, as has, has been feared by some, that would have to come back for approval. Is that right? So we would have the opportunity then to... Uh, to say no if that was our desire. Through the chair, that, that is correct. Uh, they would have to file an application for a condominium. Good, thank you. Okay, Councillor Nyman. Wait a minute, I'll let um, Chad. Through you, Your Worship. Trish Warren is in the waiting room now. She was under her husband, Kevin Scanlon's Zoom account, so that was why she was not let in. Would it be okay well, if I let her in? Well, we're, we're kind of, going through with questions here. So we're going to carry on with questions. I've got Councillor Hirsch or Councillor Nyman, then Councillor Margotson, and we'll, we'll get through them and then see about uh, reverting back if that's the will of Council. Councillor Nyman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I just have a question in uh, the conditions of approval. Uh, transportation section. I'm not sure. I got page eight to 15 of that. Um, I see that the owner is willing to going to pay for the, uh, the turn lanes on, on Main Street in Wellington. But uh, the thing that I want to question is um, the cost of the uh, traffic signal uh, at that intersection of Main Street and Street A coming out. Uh, they're only willing to pay one third of the cost of the uh, traffic signal uh, in the amount of $100,000. Just explain that to me, uh, because in my view, if we're doing it for the uh, developers, they pay for the whole thing. So just, if I can get an explanation on part B of transportation. Okay. Matt? Yep, through the chair. Um, so I believe John Gooding is with us. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw it over to him to see if he's got a better answer to that. But um, I'd have to check the draft conditions on the other two subdivisions that we approved earlier this year. And I believe there is some cost sharing between them, uh, specifically uh, the fields of Wellington. They had a requirement for traffic lights as well. So I'm not entirely sure how it's, it's being split up, but, but it is, there is um, some allocation towards the other developments. So I'll, 
I'll flip it over to John. I'm not sure if he has a, a better explanation for that. Yeah, through the chair. Unfortunately, Matt, I, I don't. I mean, it's. I think I kind of agree with you, though. I think it's the purposes for cost sharing. Okay, follow up, Councillor Nyman. Councillor Nyman, respectfully, if I may cut in, I was hoping to give some more feedback on that uh, because I was involved in those discussions with a prior engineer. Well, Councillor Nyman's got another question of staff, Martin. Uh, thank you. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, we're having a set of lights there. Um, yeah, I'll, never mind. I, I'm good with that. I just uh, I'd like to have more information on what the lights are going to cost and who's paying the the lion's share of it is what I'd like to know. Okay. Well, I think that's that's a staff question, and staff will have to come back with the answer. Thank you. Councillor Margotson. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, um, based on my review of the subdivision and how it fits into the east end of Wellington, I tend to agree with some of the comments tonight and the comments from Councillor Harper. I don't think Council at this point fully understands what the obligations of the proponent are with respect to parkland. I talked to Mr. Coffey today and he wasn't quite sure and that's something that I'd like to understand because we're, we're proposing 204 units with five, about 500, per, potentially 500 population <coughs> more into this area. And we have existing dwellings all around. The, the people who are proposed, the proponent owns most of the land to the north and west. And we know that we're gonna connect this lake shore estates between Ashkill Gardens and. Let's have a master plan. Let's find out what park we need for that amount of people in the East End of Wellington. And I have trouble with block 157 described as a private public place. A private public place and community center where the uses in the zoning are restricted to things like a retirement home, a senior citizens housing complex, a private recreation facility, medical clinic, or a commercial club. It seems like that's targeted towards what we're speaking of tonight is trying to be directed towards a certain demographic. I don't see a convenience store or in, in also like a playground that would, would attract a diversity of, of different folks into this community. So um, in, a, in the linear park has nothing to do with parkland dedication. So I think that this subdivision needs to have a, a little closer examination in the context of the whole East End of Wellington and come up with a plan that we as decision makers can feel comfortable about what we're proposing for the future of Wellington. So those are my comments. Okay, thank you. Other comments from, we, we've got, uh, I'm sorry, who, who is, have we got here, Chad? Are you speaking of Trisha Warren? Yeah. Is she has left the meeting. She sent me an email saying that she was going to email all of counselor, council oh. workers. Okay, thank you. So we'll go back to questions of members of council. Councilor Roberts and then Councilor Maynard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do have a question at the end of this. Um, but I'm, I'm having a moment of cognitive dissonance, a little puzzlement. Um, for a number of years, we've been saying that we have a housing supply crisis and we need to act expeditiously to address that housing supply crisis. Uh, notables in our local media have said we have a housing supply crisis as well as um, several iterations of council. And now we seem to be having a discussion around providing housing supply in that crisis around quaintness and aesthetics. So that's my puzzlement. Um, my question to staff is that we do have uh, three or more uh, developers on the go in the Wellington uh, area. And I just wanted to know how staff is going to assure, how we collectively are going to assure 
that all of these developments are functioning uh, as an integrated community, that, that all the pieces fit and that it, it looks and feels like an integrated community. I'm wondering if staff could speak to that. And I am satisfied with staff's uh, response to Councillor Hirsch on the condominium aspect. I, I appreciate that, but if I could get that question answered, I'd appreciate it too. Thank you. Okay, Matt. Um, so through the chair, um, the question relates to three separate uh, projects and how they integrate with the existing community. Um, like it, if we if we start with with the Caitlin development, I mean that project is um, was 10, 15 years old when it was first approved, and it was approved as a golf course community. There was probably very little integration with the with with Wellington in general. Um, when it came back to council two years ago, it it they were asked to work very closely with uh, the Fields of Wellington team uh, who had to do an official plan amendment and that included a neighborhood concept plan. So I think the work that was done on the Fields of Wellington project and um, I, I think Caitlin benefited from that a little bit because the Fields of Wellington project was, they looked very closely at how that development would be integrated with the existing community. And so there, there were some concessions that were made by Caitlin to, to, to change their plan and, and, and provide a little bit better connectivity to, to the north end of the village. Um, Wellington Bay Estates is, is, is uh, quite different because um, unlike Caitlin and Fields of Wellington, the Wellington Bay Estates development was always considered part of the town of Wellington going back before the approval of the secondary plan, this particular property wasn't, was part of the urban area. And so there, there's always been a development plan for um, this property. So I guess when, when we look at the design policies of the secondary plan, um, we've, got, we've got a plan that, that has a, a grid light structure, which is something that uh, the secondary plan um, asks ask for. It, it's not uh, a plan that, that looks for cul-de-sacs or, or, or short crescents or things like that. It does ask for a grid-like pattern, which is, which is what we have uh, before us. It, it, the secondary plan asks for a mixture of densities. And even over the past year, we've worked with the developer to get some increase in density on, on, the, on the three uh, townhouse blocks that um, that we did just touch on briefly, we don't have concept plans in front of us for those blocks, but but that is the intent is that they would be designed for, as town as blocks. Um, so there is now a range of, of densities included in the plan. The uh, the linear parkway, although we've we've heard quite a bit of discussion on that, it, it is intended to be um, inclusive to every everybody who lives in Wellington and, and would eventually provide a, an important uh, active transportation link to the Millennium Trail. Um, and then of course, it, uh, it, it's been designed to tie into the future development to the West, which, which is the Lakeside Estates uh, subdivision, which had draft plan approval um, a few years back. But the, my understanding is they're working on an, uh, a revised concept. So there, there is connectivity to, to that planned project as well. So I, I think there is um, integration with the existing community with this plan. Um, I do appreciate the comments on, on the aesthetics and, um, and the design. Um, and then of course the, the condo issue, which we, which we talked on. So um, to Councilor Roberts, I hope that answered your question, um, but I can delve deeper if, if needed. Councilor Roberts, anything else? Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm generally in support of, of what staff is proposing here. And I think aesthetics are still a bit of a luxury dealing with the crisis we have. So thank you. Okay. Councillor Maynard. Um, thank you, Your Worship. 
So the uh, discussions around this um, this agreement that was drawn up many years ago for a, a trade off of land it's it's not in our package and it seems I just um, do we know the exact details of that, how long it was to carry on for? Because that's probably what, maybe 15 plus years ago has it lapsed. We don't have a copy of the set agreement in the in our package. Um, because I think the, the desire for meaningful green space is is hugely, uh, hugely important. Um, and it says that, the, that the, so that's the, the one question, is there, is there a way, are we absolutely tied? We don't have the agreement in front of us, but to, to, to not allowing for, for more green space. Matt? Um, through the chair, I, I have not seen an agreement. And um, if it relates back to a previous subdivision uh, approval, it, it may be in a subdivision agreement from I think 2003, maybe when when that development was approved, but I but I haven't checked myself. So if it was in 2003, and and we don't and we haven't, uh, the planning department hasn't even seen a copy of the of the uh, supposed agreement. Why is it even being Why is it even being considered? Mm, a, lot, a lot of frozen people. Matt, you're frozen, just so you know. Is there someone else that could, um, planning that could staff here. answer that? John here? John, any, anyway, you know the answer to that question? Yeah, through the chair, unfortunately, is uh, um, I'm a little new in the project as well. I mean, I've only come online about three months. Mike Michaud is on the line. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have seen some calculations. I can't remember exactly when they were forwarded to me, but my understanding is the, the land that was given up for the arena is equivalent to the parkland that's required as part of this plan of subdivision. Um, so, and, and it actually, in fact, there's there's still in an over dedication, uh, although very slight, but it's still an over dedication uh, based on what was agreed to a number of years ago when the, the lands were switched. So, if we don't see parkland now, that that is the reason why. Uh, if we if they didn't give up the land or an agreement wasn't made back in the day, then we wouldn't have an arena. Yeah, but we okay. sorry. I'll, I'll just say we haven't we haven't uh, we haven't seen the agreement. We don't know what whether the agreement has lapsed. We don't uh, have the details. So the, that's the, a, the, no. the lapse through you, Councilor Maynard. The, the, the lapsing would be relevant. It's, it's it was an exchange of lands. So okay. you, you give you give you, we get they gave us the land, and we agreed to not charge cash in lieu of parkland for a certain amount of their development that was equivalent to the parkland that was associated with the with the arena. With the arena. So th there's there's no need for a lapsing date because it's a strict change of of land. Um, so we have seen the agreement. I, I, I have seen calculations based on that. Um, if there's an actual agreement, I, I have not seen it. Um, I just know that uh, there was some sort of agreement and that uh, I've seen calculations associated with that. Okay, so we talk about an eventual link to the Millennium Trail, which might, you know, you might have a little bit of meaningful green space, but do we, is there any projections what eventual means? How long till that build out? and? And why I'm not sure whether the lands are all even in the same ownership. Why that uh, could not be completed at this time? If, if council wishes, the 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 the, uh, the agreement or the uh, the draft conditions could be structured such that the developer create a green pathway from Main Street all the way to Millennium Trail. 
and then rebuild as necessary as in, then the subsequent phases come on stream. Um, you know, by putting by putting the pathway in now, uh, when second phase and third phase and fourth phase come on, you're always going to be interrupting that that pathway to put in services, to put in um, new landscaping, what pathways, roadways, whatever it might be. So um, you you could ask for it now. Um, the the developer then has to decide whether they are willing to accept that condition or if they want to go to LPAT uh, associated with that condition because they feel that it's not required and above and beyond what's required for the plan of subdivision, then I guess they have that, uh, that ability. Okay. And if I could, with your uh, indulgence, well, Worship, um, just a... Uh, a comment. So earlier in this meeting, we had uh, planning staff comment on the uh, the look and the feel of uh, what we want our rural community to to look like. Uh, I'm just wondering how we factored in the uh, the look and feel of our um, of our small uh, of our small urban um, communities and the continuity of uh, of of the village of Wellington. Who's that to Michael? I, I think probably. Whoever wants to take it. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we do our best in, in once we we see designs. I mean, we haven't seen the detailed design. We haven't uh, uh, asked for any house designs at this point in time. So uh, that that's part and parcel of what we can ask for at the detailed design stage. Um, you know, they, they are in conformity with the secondary plan in terms of providing a... a a grid-like pattern of, of streets that's connected. Um, you know, we, we are creating a walkable community. We do require sidewalks on some connecting local streets or, or collector streets. Uh, so there will be that ability to, to move freely throughout the community uh, in an active way. Um, but, this community is also a community of mostly single family homes. So if, if we want a, a community of mostly single family homes, then what I saw from this plan when I first saw it is more in keeping with Wellington as opposed to adding in density, adding in some height, adding in some different forms of tenure, such as condo for, for a couple of blocks. Um, does that change the character of the community? I, I don't know. Uh, one would say yes, and some would say no. But as the community grows, and what we heard tonight is we want people in this community so that they can help pay for the water, they can help pay for upgrades to different things within the community, and perhaps add to um, more commercial opportunities and support the commercial opportunities that are there now. Um, so the only way you have an inclusive community is to have all kinds of different types of uh, housing forms, uh, singles, towns, different types of heights, uh, stacked townhouses, apartments, four or five, six stories, and uh, different types of tenure. So freehold and condo and land lease, uh, whatever the options are, uh, to give the maximum ability for all types of of, of um, of people in different economic strata to have access to housing that they could either find affordable and or attainable. Thank you. So I've got Councillor McNaughton and then we'll go to the, uh, and then Councillor Forrester. So Councillor McNaughton. Thank you. I'll try to be brief. Um, I share a lot of the concerns I've heard tonight. I, I um, particularly, I'm very, I'm glad that Councillor Maynard pointed out that we haven't seen uh, the, um, the actual paperwork to, uh, to show the background on the, the uh, land transfer. I have concerns when I look at this plan that there's not even a little park at where there could be a couple of trees and a play structure so that there could be a gathering place where people could actually, you know, meet their neighbors. Um, and the, um, the point that someone made about, uh, I, I'm not as concerned with, uh, I think this, 
this actual property, um, this actual um, plan could could even use a little uh, more density if that could help accomplish a little bit of green space potentially. Uh, so that even though they're whatever's happened in the past, kids still have a place to go if indeed kids are ever going to come to this area, um, which would be very desirable. Um, and uh, the the um, so I would be very curious to see what that agreement looks like and, and perhaps it still exists in somewhere um, and, and points to what it, what it is. Uh, and the, um, uh, the, the one thing I do actually like about this development is I like that active transit boulevard, but I think we should stop referring to it as, as a linear park and start referring to it as an active transit boulevard. Um, and, uh, and I would um, support, I think what's coming, I think we're looking for some changes that man manage to um, do what, that maybe prevent what one speaker earlier said was an inward looking, um, an inward looking uh, neighborhood. So, I, I look forward to seeing something that looks like a real neighborhood that's very connected and has focal points. So, which I think is nearly just echoing what's been said before. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Councilor Forrester. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, once again, you know, I'm starting to struggle with some of these large scale uh, developments. Uh, I think Councilor Roberts asked, uh, do we know how they will integrate with each other? Well, from my past experience growing up in outside of Toronto in the small areas of Brooklyn, Whitby, Bowmanville, Curtis, I'm going to point out, guess what? They don't integrate with one another. What you see is a build out around the town. You see malls, stores built on the outskirts because the small downtowns were never designed to handle 500 new homes, 2,000 new homes. You know, you're talking about another, just with this one, possibly another 300 cars. Imagine that, downtown Wellington. We've already gone down there and we see what it looks like now. Let's add another thousand cars on a Friday afternoon. And I guess I struggle with the fact that we've never really, we don't ask ourselves, yes, we need housing. But, you know, going back to the Dan Taylor days when we talked about the rural economy and what that meant to Prince Edward County and the growth. How does that change with what we're trying to do now? How does the growth of... Uh, small towns like Wellington, Bloomfield, Picton, you know, line up with our tourism sector, with our wineries, with our creative rural economy. You know, again, this is, these are the things I struggle with as we try to build out these small towns that will push the attractiveness of them that we have right now to the outskirts. Again, that's just my statement right now. And that's what I have a hard time really coming to terms with, even though we need this growth for the homes. But I think in the long run, you know, be careful what you ask for because we're not going to like what we see down the road once we get it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, got some more on the second round here, Councillor Harper. I just want to ask a, one question of staff. Do we have any idea of the price points that are proposed for this? I'm through the chair. It would the, the market has changed so much in the last little while. I, I, I wouldn't hazard a guess. Um, perhaps, perhaps the Martin could sh shed some light on, on where, where they think they are at with, with, um, with the price point. Is that information available? Through Mayor, I'm happy to discuss. It's not part of the formal application. I don't believe it's typically a requirement of formal application, but I'm happy to discuss where we think we'd be right now. Um, I can say that if we were pricing out units in that uh, community right now, with prices being kind of where they are, I could see us as starting below $400,000. How much? Below $400,000. Below four hundred. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll ask uh, other members of council. I saw Councilor Hirsch. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A related question. I showed two questions with respect to money, and and staff might have um, an answer on on uh, well on both of them actually. Um, 
looking at, at this project compared to the other two that we've already uh, approved, my guess is that the price point um, will come in lower. In other words, this project will be of a more affordable nature than, than the other two we've already approved. I wonder if staff could maybe um, uh, concur with that idea. And the other, the other question is, um, Clearly, there is the, the, the front end loading of the, the cost of the water, wastewater plants and so on is built into the conditions for this, um, which we've done with the other projects as well. What happens if this doesn't come to pass? Does that, that lack of that front ending, does that uh, hinder our ability to make uh, decisions on the, uh, on the water wastewater? Okay, we'll let uh, Madam CAO respond to this. So I'll Marcia. let the comparative price point through the chair to Council or Councilor Hirsch. I'll let the comparative price point question go to staff, but I just wanted to respond to the question about the front end servicing. Um, the way we are conceptualizing um, front end servicing in the DC Wellington area specific DC bylaw that has already been passed by Council assumes that we would eventually recoup the cost through development over the next uh, 20 years or longer. Uh, the, the front end agreements are around how we would manage cash flow in terms of debt financing um, because we carry the front end cost to build this and then over that long time period we get it paid back. So we are not in a situation where um, any, uh, we need some development but we don't, there, it is not um, a requirement of this project and we're looking at this project on its merits and how it fits with the secondary plan in this staff recommendation. And then should council pass this, we would then entertain conversations uh, on their participation in terms of the servicing agreement, but it's not a requirement um, that this project, uh, they're related, but only after, we're only entertaining conversations about the servicing agreement with those that get draft approval. And uh, this is the next project in that space. Okay. And the other half of the question, it's to Matt. Yeah, through the chair, it, it, it's a difficult question to answer because there's so many factors that can play into what makes a development affordable. Um, the development cost being, being one of them. I can say that Fields of Wellington has more, has some higher density development built into their plan. So that might suggest to me that Fields of Wellington will have um, more affordable entry points. Having said that, there there are the two or three townhouse blocks in Wellington Bay Estates, um, and my understanding is this developer is is ready to ready to go to construction fairly fairly soon. There is twenty units that we've allocated on a, on a temporary basis to be serviced directly from Wellington Main Street. So um, the entry point there might might be reasonable as well. I think Caitlin has some, maybe some challenges there. They, there's not a great deal of density in that plan. Um, there's a lot of green space built into Caitlin and as well as the golf course. So that might push the, the desirability of that development um, a little bit more than these other two. So um, it, it's, it's very difficult to say. It, it's a lot of it's based on the market demand. Okay, thank you. Uh, who else did I see? Councillor Margeson? Did you have a name, yes, Councillor Harper? Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to follow up on my earlier comments, which weren't related to quaintness and aesthetics. And I think the secondary plan speaks to the grid that, that they presented here. And I fully acknowledge that we speak earlier and other times about a housing supply crisis. I just my, my feeling was that I wanted to know about the parkland, whether that dedication was for just this portion of their land holding or the portion to the north as well, and what's going to happen with Lake, Lake Shore Estates, just so we know, is there never going to be a park here? Okay, well, tell us that we're never going to get a park so that we can be honest and transparent with the public that this area of Wellington won't have a park because we have the arena, that's fine. Maybe we'll connect, we'll find a way to connect this community over to the arena. 
with with some kind of a trail to get to the ball diamonds on the other side. I'm just saying, let's have a plan. We can wait for a month to give them. The principle of development here is well established. I mean, it's a vi village residential development area in the secondary plan. It's not that we're taking away their development right. And my other th point that I made was on block 157. The zoning that was proposed for that and the limited commercial uses look like they're directed towards the type of community that we're speaking of tonight that we don't want. We want diversity. And I'd like to know from the planners if that those uses that were proposed for that block are in keeping with what a planner would normally recommend for commercial in an area of Wellington that's going to have that high of a population? Or should we be looking at a, a more appropriate zoning for different uses and not being directed by the developer to really um, constrain the types that will support a certain demographic. So I just go back to that. I, I want to get it right. And it's not that I'm talking about quaintness or aesthetics or getting away from housing. It's a good development because what we approve tonight or in the future has a long, long-term impact on Wellington. Thank you. Councillor Harper. Uh, yeah, I guess I was going to pretty much echo what uh, uh, Councillor Martin has said. I, I think for me, there is no master plan here. We're being asked to take a leap of faith that things will get worked out in the conditions. I need to see something on paper. I need to see how does this fit in the overall context of the east end of Wellington. The developer owns a significant chunk of land between this property and the arena. What's going to happen there? How does that dovetail with this? Right now, we've got a, a 60 kilometer an hour road going to nowhere with a strip of land that's called a park that's anything but a park going to nowhere. How are we to really judge how this whole package is going to come together? And in what sort of phases are we talking about um, that this would unfold and what sort of a time frame? Because right now it's sitting in the middle of nowhere with no connections other than the 60 kilometer an hour road down to Main Street. So I don't really have a feeling like I've seen on other subdivisions that we really know what we're getting into. The townhouse blocks, great. We have some townhouse blocks, but we don't know what they are. Are they one story townhouses for seniors? Are they three story townhouses? What sort of eyes on the street do people have? with the design so we know that it's actually a safe neighborhood. It's just not all about garage forward development, that there's actually something that looks neighborly in that. Again, the park issue is huge. Um, I just don't feel we have enough to really say that, that, that this is a, a clear development that we can get behind. And I do appreciate Councillor Maynard's points that you know we really need to understand what that agreement is. There's a whole other chunk of land. Is there not some other way to work some credits with that land so we get some green space? I believe it was Councillor uh, McNaughton perhaps. Give us the one acre uh, park in the middle of this thing. I mean, the, the basic rules of, of, of planning surely must need to apply here. If, if, if a two minute walk to green space is kind of a, uh, a principle that especially is true for seniors, I don't see how that in any way can be uh, can be found in this development. So I just don't see how this is frankly good planning. And I would challenge the planners on our team to tell me, is this good planning? Because I don't see it. All right, other questions from members of council? I think we'll um, be moving on. Councillor Roberts. Well, I'm, and then I'm, I'll make, Councillor Nyman, I'm, and then I'll make a comment. We're gonna move on. My question is related to a question that Councillor Maynard posed. Um, uh, it was a different item, but it asked the question, how, how, if we don't know, how does this application get here for our approval at this point in time? So um, I'm also very interested in staff's response to Councillor Harper's question just now, um, because the 
implication is that this is a bad proposal from a planning perspective that's been presented to us at council for approval. And that has a lot of knots and uh, wrong, wrong way signs in it. So I'd really like to hear from staff about is this good planning or not? Because a lot of councillors have said it isn't. Well, I, I think the, um, I mean, that is a, I, I think that's a reasonable question. I don't, I don't know that we want to get into a debate about, um, you know, whether it is or it isn't. There are a number of questions that have been brought up that I'm certainly troubled by. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I think it's a valid question and it, it has a place to be discussed. Um, Could I get an answer from staff? Yeah, let me go Councillor Harper Michael and I get that. the answer to the same question. Yeah, well, I mean, we wouldn't bring anything forward to you if we didn't think it was good planning. Remember, we also, as much as we can ask for certain things, ultimately, it's the developer's application. So if the developer keeps saying no, 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 and then starts putting pressure on us to, to get in front of you as counsel, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really incumbent on the, the developer to convince you that 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 this is the best plan available. Um, you know, we, we have spoken to the developer indicating we'd like to see more green space as well. We'd like to see more uh, variety in the housing. Um, we did force them to connect westward through Chicken Dance um, with that one road uh, that is available to us in this particular phase. Now they do have a concept plan for the entire land holdings, but it's it's nothing but single family homes. Um, I mean, we could we could show that to you, but you know, 15 years from now when it's fully built out, it's not going to look the same as we see today. Um, markets change, uh, planning ideas change, um, and uh, you're absolutely right. If 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 we want to see a full concept plan, um, I would demand that, that that plan be changed because a monolithic approach to single family homes for for a thousand units uh, or whatever the number of units is for all, the entirety of the land holdings makes absolutely no sense. Um, we negotiated in, in good faith with the developer trying to get some of these things. But ultimately, the, the developer can say, no, uh, I'm not doing any more. I want to go forward with this. OK, so we'll go forward with this. And we're here tonight. And obviously, US Council and a number of residents have great uh, reticence in regards to this plan in terms of parkland. And I agree with the parkland. Typically, we would have parkland associated with this. But the deal was struck long ago where our hands are tied and and we're unable to ask for parkland at this point in time. We could ask for it. We could ask, say, out of the goodness of your heart, please put a, a one acre park in, in this particular phase. And what they have every right to say, well, we've already given you enough parkland, so you're not getting any more. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know, but it's well within their rights to say that we've already given enough. Um, so we brought something forward to you that we thought was was sellable, if you want to use that term. Uh, that's maybe not the best planning because our hands are somewhat tied. We we we, we don't have park land. We don't know what's the park what the what the uh, actual stormwater pond is going to look like. Um, yeah, we don't have some building elevations, but. Anything that's a block on a plan of subdivision goes through site plan approval. So we can ask for that at a later date and we can enforce, you know, garages equal with the front setbacks, at least three, uh, three meters for the house and five meters for the garage, that sort of thing. So that we know that the garage is going to be pushed back and that, uh, that the rear yards will be ample as opposed to what you see in sub subdivisions where you have, you know, six, eight meter, um, uh, setbacks for the house and then you have a, a bunch of of lawn in the front yard that nobody sees or uses because it's it has this irregular depth to it 
So, you know, good planning, you would, you would change the zoning and you would bring the house closer to the street so that if you're out gardening and then your neighbor pops out as well, then you can have a quick conversation about politics, whatever you might want to discuss. Um, so, but if everybody's set back, I mean, you know, I live in a neighborhood where, you know, uh, the houses are set back six, eight meters and I have to walk to the end of my driveway to talk to my neighbor across the street. And it's, it's somewhat uncomfortable sometimes. Um, uh, now we do talk, it's a small crescent, but that's fine. But in it, you know, you, you really want to set standards. And I think as we go through the, the new zoning bylaw, that's a lot of this, this, the topic of discussion that we're going to have with you as council in terms of what do you see? You, you know, do, do you like the concept of a three meter setback for a house with a five meter garage setback uh, as, as sort of your minimum standards and exterior yards, maybe at one and a half meters instead of the, the current three meters, which, which pushes the house even closer to the, to the side street. Or do you want verandas that sort of wrap around on the corner units? Is that a design feature that you want? So we can have all of these discussions at a later date, but we're sort of, we're hamstrung by our zoning bylaw again um, in terms of some of those things, although we can come up with a new zoning bylaw for this project. But, um, you know, we have limitations and the developer has every right to say, you know what, you guys are asking for too much. This is what we want. Let's go forward with this. And then, we as, as staff only make recommendations as council. You have every right to make whatever comments you feel are best for the community. We hear you loud and clear. Um, whatever you decide, we will go back and we will negotiate again with the developer. Okay, Council Nyman. Then we're, I think we're ready to move on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanna make sure I'm getting some clear information um, because I've looked through this uh, application and the comment was made that we've got a street that's 60 kilometers an hour but I never seen 60 kilometers an hour in that proposal here and I put and I don't know if staff can answer it but I thought in towns or villages uh, the normal speed limit is, is 50. I mean, just want to make sure that I'm getting the clear information I don't understand where the 60 is coming from if somebody could answer that. Uh, who, who wants to take that? Um, th through the chair, I, I'm not aware where the 60 kilometer an hour uh, came from. Um, street A is, is uh, designated to be a, a collector road. So there, there might be uh, some connection there between other collector roads and, and what this road is, but there has not been a speed limit um, established. For, for this street, so it, it, that's still up for debate. Okay, that's what I thought, because I couldn't find it in there. And, and is it in a town where it's 50 is usually the maximum? That is correct. Thank you. Okay, Councillor uh, Harper, you want to um, you want to put something forward? I just want to want to say that you know, in terms of a. Uh, uh, I really don't have a lot of objections about this, except there are, as we keep running into, um, some questions that really need to be responded to and more information provided to council before I'd be comfortable um, approving this. I mean, the issue of the, the parkland disagreement with the, with the, uh, the arena, stormwater, uh, you know, the whole, the retail zoning or the commercial zoning, uh, what's going to go in there. A lot of questions are still hanging out that make me uncomfortable to, to approve this as we see it tonight. Councillor Harper, you wanted to put something forward? Yes, uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So I just want to be clear, I, it's not I'm against, I'm, I am for the development, it's, it's village residential, so it should be developed and it will be developed. I don't have any question of that, but I believe that it has to be, you know, something that we can be proud of that uh, is inspiring. And I, and I am often, you know, thinking about a former employer where we had slogans and, and the slogan has always stuck me with me, which is good enough is not enough. And that's what we have here. 
We're saying this is good enough. We're saying that we check the boxes and therefore we recommend that it be approved, but good enough is not enough in this case. We have to do better. So here's my um, amended motion. So keep the first paragraph, remove the second and the third and replace it with the following. Um, that this file be referred back to staff to seek the applicant's cooperation on the following required amendments to the draft plan. Number one, that uses prescribed in rezoning of block 157 be limited such that a private community center is not permitted. Two, the public spaces component be reimagined to provide proper park space and linkages to surrounding areas, including Millennium Trail and Belleville Street. Three, provide details of buffering and landscaping surrounding the stormwater management pond. Four, conceptual drawings and unit pricing be outlined for the townhouse blocks. And five, that draft approval is conditional on townhouses being a portion of the initial build out phase. Okay, that's your amendment. Yes, sir. And I'll second it, Mayor Ferguson. Okay. Um, we've got, um, we'll let, we're gonna have questions from Councillor, I think, because this is a, um, a new motion, effectively a new motion. I see that Spencer has his hand up. I'm going to let him comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you for all the comments. I, I, I just think <clears throat> myself and my colleagues be, be given a few minutes just to answer some of the more uh, glaring questions. So I'll, I'll start on the parkland. Under the Planning Act, um, a municipality can and is able to require 5% of the land in a re residential subdivision for parkland or they could take cash in lieu of parkland. If you look at the draft plan and you look at the, the schedule on the draft plan, there is no parkland. So that's not a mistake. We're following the legislation and, and I'll turn it over to my colleague who, who's been involved in this file from the get-go or the family. But parkland was dealt with prior to this plan of subdivision, that there was an agreement entered into to provide the equivalent of 5% of the land to the municipality, which they developed previously already. So legally or technically, this development has met the Planning Act requirement for parkland, of the 5%, and as, as your staff said, slightly over 5%. Um, so in fairness, you can't ask for another acre because your predecessors took land for park and you built a arena on it. So I'll just stop. I have a, a couple more Planning Act questions or comments, but maybe if, if Darby or Martin can just speak to how we got here on the parkland and why there is no zero percentage of parkland in this subdivision, which is very unique. Darby or Martin? I'm happy to speak to it. Um, as mentioned by, mentioned by Spencer, a dedication was made a long time ago. The county made its decision as to how to use that land. Now, as noted, over 5% was provided. Now, the, the fact that there is no additional parkland, it's tied into a principle of fairness. Beyond everything else, we provided that land. And I know that some councillors here have mentioned they want to see more green space. And staff has noted that in the past and have we have had multiple discussions with them. I know some of councillors don't like the reference to a linear park, but that whole active trail with the strip along it to create some green space was done to kind of offset the fact that we no longer had a parkland 5% dedication. Secondly, I wanted to quickly move over to that pond. The questions about, you know, how big that pond is, what's going on over there. That pond land was also dedicated a long time ago by Wellington Bay Estates to the county in order to provide a pond for all of our lands, that's our southern lands, our future north development lands, as well as to the lands west of us that no longer belong to Wellington Bay Estates. Recently, a prior city planner uh, has spoken to us and asked us to enlarge that pond 
because he wanted to make that into more of a physical uh, and aesthetic asset to offset the lack of parkland dedication. That pond land was originally a lot smaller. That was the pond land that was previously dedicated. We've cut cer certain lots. We've given up more of our land to accommodate the pond for our lands, as well as the lands that we no longer own to the west of us. We've enlarged the pond to create an aesthetic asset for us, for the lands west of us, and in order to manage the runoff from, again, from our lands, our future northern lands, and the lands west of us. Coming back to what I mentioned as the principle of fairness, we've made a 5% land contribution on over 5%. We've given up additional land on top of that, enlarging the lands allocated to the pond in order to expand that into an aesthetic asset for the broader community. And there is a condition or draft plan approval that states that if the county feels like they still don't have enough land to create the aesthetic asset, and at the same time to have enough pond to uh, handle our lands, the lands north of us, and again, the lands west of us, we will lose more land, we might lose more lots. That's a condition of a draft approval. So in terms of a principle of fairness and asking for more park space, we've more than met an obligation and we have, for lack of a better term, jumped through other hoops and done other things to compensate for that in order to keep staff happy. So the comment about not good enough, we are well above and beyond what we're required to do by the Planning Act. The question of whether this is good planning is answered by the Planning Act and our requirements. We've met our requirements, we've surpassed our requirements, and we've kept on adding to what we've done to surpass those requirements to start with. So again, in the principle of fairness, we've given up more land than we could be expected to give up in this instance. We've done other things that we were not technically required to do that we tried to do to appease the county staff who was looking out for the county's interest and who was interested in proper green space. So again, that, that's my final comment for that. Um, while I have the opportunity, I wanted to make a couple other comments uh, because a lot of the people, I've noticed some things have come back, some questions have come to staff, and staff has been very good at handling those questions. But this is an old application that's been around for four years. Not all the staff involved here, planning and engineering, have been there since the start of this application. Heck, I haven't been, but I've been here longer than most of the staff. So just a couple of comments about uh, some of the other things that were mentioned. Um, the lack of connection to the rest of the community. The roads in the grid pattern, as noted, is consistent with the secondary plan, and the current road layout is dramatically different than we initially what we offered that didn't run through the same kind of collector. But the changes were made after a 2017 initial comments from county when we were asked to create a grid pattern that's basically in line with what we created. What is in front of you today is consistent with what prior engineering staff have asked us to do and the way they've asked us to realign the roads. We have multiple collector roads in there, in the current subdivision and in the future northern lands that we're planning in order to connect to us, to the lands west of us and future, other future development on the east end of Wellington. The staff has it presented to you today, but during the process, prior to even getting the application to, uh, to council, we've provided multiple different layouts of how we could sort out the northern lands to connect to other lots. We've proved to the county in conversation with the lands west of us, that's the BGS Shika Dance. We just had discussions with them. We've made sure we aligned to their subdivision. They've realigned some things. We've made some concessions to them. Part of the reason why we are enlarging a lot is to make sure we can align to the lands west of us and that everything connects so I thought that comment's a little bit unfair. And again, whatever the layout is right now, that layout is based on four years of comments from county engineering. Some of that stuff not being here today. Um, a couple other things that were mentioned um, that I feel like I have to touch on today. Uh, the condo corporation. Uh, the roads in the subdivision are virtually all public with the exception of one, private, one or two private roads that had to be created as private roads in order to accommodate some of the tighter townhouse units that we're putting in there, that we were asked to add to promote more density. Um, any facility built in that middle rec center, we've discussed this, uh, would, not, would have access to a broader community 
based on fees, not a public facility, but it would have access to outside members. Now, this kind of rolls me into the bigger question about families versus older people. So we, like the county, cannot discriminate between age groups. Wellington on the Lake, for all the talk here about not allowing younger people, Wellington on the Lake had a woman living there who had a baby and continued to live in the community. We cannot discriminate. The person still lives there. I'm not sure where that idea comes from. We can determine who we market to. The market will dictate who we market to. If we have 67 acres of land we're trying to develop, and we're asked to prepay development charges in some large fees, which we're prepared to do to move forward with this development, we're going to sell the houses to whoever picks them up the fastest. In this county, the greatest demand, if that comes from the older crowd, we will sell to the older crowd. That's who we will market to. We can't discriminate, but we will market to the people who buy those lots the fastest to allow us to get back all those development charges we've paid. Either way, whoever we end up marketing to, we will be dramatically increasing the inventory in the county. As the one developer who's actually built in the county, has lots of experience building in the county, in Wellington specifically, we are ready to move now and we are ready to add inventory. If we add units to the county, that will increase inventory. That will be taken up for by families, by older people. If we can increase the inventory here, it will free up other units across the rest of the county. We will sell to who wants to buy. If that's an older crowd, that will be an older crowd. Uh, Mayor. What? Yes, Mayor. No, I just, uh, you know, go on, but we, we do have to proceed here. Any other comments? Um, the last comment on the condo corporation. Uh, we're not requesting any condo corporations today. If, if we were requesting it, the council would decide on it. If we wanted to add a condo corporation later, there would be another council vote. We, we don't have final plans, but I don't want to conceal my plans from the county. We'll mark it to who you can to. We've discussed a potential condo. It hasn't been finalized. It's not before council today. It doesn't have to be decided today. That's all my count. Th thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, um, Councillor uh, Harper, you were, you better repeat the, or, or maybe the clerk's got clerk's the- Clerk's got uh, it, he could send it, Mayor. Your, your uh, amendment? Maybe it's best if, Chad, send it out to the group and people can comment on it. Well, I, Chad, I would prefer it being read out. Okay. Read it? Yeah, Chad, have you got the, the amendment? Yeah, I have it in front of me. Okay, well, if you could read it, please. Would this file be referred back to staff to seek the applicant's cooperation on the following required amendments to the draft plan? One, the use is prescribed and rezoning of Block 157 be limited such that a private community center is not permitted. Two, the public spaces component be reimagined to provide proper park spaces and linkages to surrounding areas, including the Millennium Trail and Belleville Street. Three, provides details of buffering and landscaping surrounding the SWM pond. Four, conceptual drawings and unit pricing by outline be outlined for townhouse blocks and five, draft approval is conditional on townhouses being a portion of initial build-out phase. Okay. All right, so are there any questions about Councillor uh, Harper's motion here or amendment? Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, I'm gonna have to put this to Councillor Harper. I like all of it. Um, my one question is unit pricing, Mike, the way real estate is and the way construction is right now, that might be hard to nail down. Just a, a thought, but the price of lumber's gone up three times, price of steel's gone up double, then the tariffs went on. Uh, that might be a tricky one to accomplish, just a suggestion. Okay. Councilor Nyman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just need to understand it a bit more. So the build-out phase, I, I'm not sure that I understand that because um, let's just say 
I, I don't know if you're talking about the lands around or just this uh, development, because it, my understanding is we're just talking about this development. I don't know why we're talking about lands surrounding it, because it could be other developers. So this developer could sell the lands next to it and have no idea what's going on from the other developers. So I don't know why we're even discussing the lands around it. This is the one that we're discussing. Okay. Other questions? Councilor Maynard. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate in the uh, in the amendment. I would still like to see the uh, the uh, land swap agreement for the for the parkland, and I'm assuming that the uh, developers could uh, could provide that. Well, we must have a copy of a, an agreement of, that's that significant. Well. We just had staff earlier tell us that they had not uh, not reviewed it. No, I know that. No, no, but we there must be a copy of it that can be provided, Madam CAO. Um, uh, through the chair to Councilor Maynard, I don't um, with council support. I don't think that needs to be in the motion itself. It was very clear that council expected uh, staff to uh, include that. And if this is uh, voted successfully and refers back to staff, we will make sure that based on the minutes of this meeting that that will be in the report. Okay, Councilor Margotson. Thank you, Your Worship. I was just going to say that item number two. You know, of this motion regarding park space would be answered by the that agreement coming forward. So I was hoping that would happen. And I would say, I would um, comment further on Councillor Nyman's. I think draft approval conditional on townhouses being a portion of the initial phase. Build out usually means the whole subdivision. Um, there are townhouses contemplated down by Main Street. I'm not sure of the servicing issues would would um, prevent that from happening, but perhaps I could come forward if they can't, but I would say that would be the initial phase instead of the initial build out phase. And then delete the word uh, unit pricing. So conceptual drawings be outlined for townhouse blocks and forget the pricing part. Okay. If, if you're okay with that, Councillor Harper. Yes, sir. Okay, other Both questions? Count Councillor Forrester. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I can fully support Councillor Harper's motion. Uh, I'm not sure what four councils ago did and what sort of agreement they made or what they thought this would mean 10 years later, but times have changed and I don't think it hurts to ask the developer, listen, we need a little more here. If not, this is going to last a little longer. So, you know, the attitude I just heard from one of the planners talking there, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Well, there's certain things that this council might want to do too. So that's my position on this now. Councillor St. Jean. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, I will be supporting uh, Councillor Harper's motion, but I think it certainly brings, uh, uh, and I've mentioned this to Councillor McNaughton already, uh, this, this is the problem we have when we look at things on the micro level, and we should be looking at all of our developments on the macro level. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Councillor Margotson, and then I have okay, a Okay, just a, a brief comment on macro versus micro, because I just remember Talbot on the trail in Picton. And that seemed to be pretty micro and it seemed to be pivoting on behalf of the developer and tell us telling us exactly what he's he's um building so let's let's not just okay. let's compare what we're approving at different you know different areas of the county and make sure we're getting the same thing oh. thanks okay uh chad i want i'd like you to reread the uh the motion please so everybody's clear and then i'll call the vote okay that this file be referred back to staff to seek the applicant's cooperation on the following required amendments to the draft plan. One, the uses prescribed in rezoning of block 157 be limited such that a private community center is not permitted. Two, the public spaces component be reimagined to provide proper park space and linkages to surrounding areas 
including the Millennium Trail and Belleville Street. Three, provides details of buffering and landscaping surrounding the SWM Con. Four, conceptual drawings be outlined for townhouse blocks. And five, draft approval is conditional on townhouses being a portion of the initial phase. Okay. All right, everybody clear? Councilor Nyman. When will this be coming? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. When will this be coming back to us? Again, they're ready and we just seem to be putting things off and off and off and I don't know. When is it coming back? I was going to ask exactly the same question because I'd like not to delay this, but uh, I'll, Mike or Matt? Um, through the chair, um, just looking at those five points, there are some here that could be turned around fairly quickly. Um, there is a small townhouse block on as part of the phase one. We can look at whether there's, there's an opportunity to include Include that as, as part of the opening phase. There is some servicing constraints uh, in phase one, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, the parkland, we'll, we'll, we'll dig into the older files and, and see if we can examine a little bit more what was going on there. Perhaps there's, there's, a, there's a quick answer. Um, and then of course that will determine how much if there's any revisions to the plan that's needed to accommodate additional park space and, and how deep we go into that. Um, the, the comment on the commercial block, what I'm hearing is that council is not in support of a private community center. Um, a public community center probably wouldn't fly there. Um, so that would either that one block 156 would have to either go to some form of residential or, or green space, depending on um, on how the discussion shakes out. But but I just wanted maybe to point that out that uh, that particular comment does remove that community center uh, from the plan. Um, if, if all that is in agreement, if we can come to a quick agreement with the developer, um, we could bring it back to council fairly quickly. Otherwise, if, the, if there's some redesign involved, it could take a while. So what is the definition of fairly quickly? Is that a month? Two months? I, 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 you know, this, yeah, I'm, this, I'm just thinking of the June agendas are, are fairly tight, but, but July for sure. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, okay, so the month cooperation with the um, with the uh, the developer to go through these these items. Okay, so uh, Madam CAO, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I believe that Mike Misha would like to speak. Oh, there he is. Okay, sorry, yeah. Mike. No, no, no apology needed. Uh, through uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, just, just in, in trying to find all this information based on existing workloads, based on getting back and forth and if there needs to be changes to the plan and then writing the reports, getting them reviewed, getting them over to Chad, getting on an agenda. Um, June's already really, really busy. Um, so yeah, it's it's looking like July at, at the earliest. Okay. All right, well, that's not, that's a not, not the latter part of the year. So it's in everybody's interest to sit down and start going through this. Okay, so we've got the uh, the motion on the floor. I'm gonna call a vote. Um, this is the, who is the seconder? Councillor Harper? Councillor Margotson. Okay, um, all those in favor, please. Hands up. One, two. Eight nine and that carries thank you chad do we have to go back to the original motion through you your worship so the the amending motion was to re, so the original motion right now would be to receive the report okay and the, the mover other, and, the second and third part have been amended um Okay. But just to receive the report. And the mover and the seconder of that was Councillor Harper and Councillor Markinson, the same two. It's the same two. Okay. 
So I'll call the vote on, so this is the first clause. Okay, so I'll call the vote on that. All those in favor, please. And that carries, thank you. On item 7.6, move in a seconder for this, please. Councillor, who hasn't spoken tonight? Uh, Councillor Nyman, seconded by Councillor Prinzen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that the item approved under delegated authority bylaw 98 2020 be received for information. Questions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? That carries. And to make bylaws for consideration, move and a seconder, please, before I sign them. Okay, Councillor Forrester, seconded by Councillor Maynard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Forrester Maynard motion of the following bylaws be read at first, second, and third time by finally passed 8.1.1, 8.1.2, 8 and 8.1.3. Uh, okay. Um, correct. Okay. Uh, all, all those in favor, please. And that carries. And confirmatory bylaw 9.1. Mr. Mayor. Madam CAO, trying to get in. Oh, sorry, Madam CAO. It's okay, um, Mr. Mayor, I don't usually speak on the bylaws section. I just wanted to, for clarity and for the record, uh, the one planning file that you approved that staff had originally proposed to deny, we do not have a bylaw for that because we didn't prepare one. So that bylaw will come to the next council meeting should we be able to get it sorted out quickly and prepare it for that agenda. So that's where you'll see the bylaw to make that happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, confirmatory bylaw, mover and a seconder, please. Councillor uh, McMahon, seconded by Councillor St. Jean. Thank you, Your Worship. This is McMahon St. Jean motion that the following bylaw be read the first, second, and third time and finally pass the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the County of Prince Edward at the meeting held on May the 19th, 2021. Thank you. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. And a motion to adjourn. Mover and a seconder for that. Councillor Bailey and Councillor Margotson. This is a Bailey Margotson motion that this meeting now adjourn at 9.59 p.m. And I'll call the vote. All those in favor. And that carries. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody.